attention, we'll get started with our Municipal Housing Agency Governing Board uh, for uh, February 24th. If we could have a roll call, please. Oops, sorry. Here. 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 Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> item number two, uh, setting date of hearing on amendment to, to mis Municipal Housing Agency annual budget for the current fiscal year ending June 30th, 2014. Is there a comment on that? Uh, Seeing none. I will move. We have a motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Item three, setting date of hearing for proposed municipal housing agency annual budget for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2015. Doug or anybody uh, comment on that? Seeing none. Seeing the, I'll move. We have a mo motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Uh, item four, approving conveyance of 1721 Carpenter Avenue city-owned municipal housing agency property pursuant to 5-H affordable home ownership and program. Any comments on that? Anybody to speak to that? I'll move. I have a motion. All everyone in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion uh, item four passes. Uh, can, can we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. We are adjourned, and I guess we still have four minutes to, before we go into our <coughs> our uh, regular agenda. So that went faster than I thought it might. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're good. Yeah.
Right. Oh, that's what it was just added in. I did. I did. Well, I'm, we're we're not muted. Invocation by our own council member Chris Coleman. Would you, if you'd like to participate and stand with us. One of the important residents of Des Moines over the last 50 years was Bishop Morris Stingman. Uh, this is a prayer for all occasions from Bishop Dingman. Thank you, Lord, for a new day. This day will never happen again. It's never happened before. Thank you for this precious gift of time. Give us a sense of urgency to use it wisely and well. This day, then, let us mend a quarrel, build peace, seek out a forgotten friend, dismiss suspicion, and replace it with trust. Write a note of thanks, share some treasure, and give a soft answer. Encourage youth, manifest our loyalty in word and deed, keep a promise, find the time, forgo a grudge, forgive an enemy. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> but clerk would take a roll call, please. County? Here. Coleman? Here. Moore? Here. Gray? Here. Mahaffey? Here. Hensley? Here. Boss? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. And as you heard, our mayor is on the telephone, so he'll be participating in our, our agenda tonight also. <clears throat> Um, let's move on then to approving the agenda as presented and or amended. Move. Although, Second. 
<laughs> Coleman, please. Six yes. Um, <clears throat> item three, approving consent agenda. Items three through forty-four, and uh, we do take individual items that uh, are wanting to be um, voted on uh, from the from our attendance. If anyone there wanting to uh, pull one of these off, or any of the council people want to pull one off for additional consideration, please uh, let us know now. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, <clears throat> I, w I was not here to submit these, so if I could give a list, please. Okay. I'm a no vote on 4 B, E, F, G, J, and L. I know some of those have been pulled for discussion. I would also like to speak on items uh, 31 and 43. <clears throat> speak on 31 and 43 and... Uh, vote no on four, uh, the entire package on four? Yes. Okay. Any others? Seeing none, could we have a motion to approve our Move. consent agenda? <clears throat> Aye. More. Seven yes. Thank you. Uh, okay. We'll go to, um, I guess, seven. Carl Voss is to speak on seven, item seven. Right. Uh, this is a really important trail connection, and uh, I've been told that um, the trail would be closed for about uh, 45 days uh, while the sidewalk is widened there. So this is long awaited. This was cut out of an earlier project because of budgets. So, um, okay. full speed ahead. Okay. Any other comments on, on uh, number seven? It's a great link. Yeah, it will be, yeah. Okay, thank you. We'll all vote. Is Carl moving it then? Yes. Aye. Uh, yes. <laughs> seven yes. He pulled it off. Okay, uh, do, 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 I guess number 16 is the next one, and uh, I think there may be some confusion about the boundaries of the neighborhood, so I was going to call on uh, Phil Delafield maybe to clarify that a little bit. Mayor Pro Tem, members of Council, Phil Delafield, Community Development Department. Our apologies for the uh, confusion on this. Uh, our intent uh, is shown on the map with the sort of the green cross-hatched area to add into the Fairmont Park boundary changes. Uh, so the remaining boundaries of the Neighborhood Association remain the same, and uh, it is extended to the west uh, up to Delaware in that green hatched area. Okay. Thank you, Phil. Yeah. And uh, with that clarification, uh, we have a motion to approve. Move. <clears throat> Thank you. Aye. Seven yes. Okay, Mr. Coleman, item 31 to speak on. Uh, 31 is setting the date of hearing for the proposed uh, budget that will begin uh, this summer and extend until July 2015. Um, I think I speak for all the council, but uh, the law requires us to give advance notice of this and also to publish um, a uh, proposed cap on what the tax levy would be next year. Uh, Scott Sanders, our finance director, um, and assistant city manager was with us this morning and made a presentation. And I just wanted to point out and put on the record that while the notice in the paper would call for an increase in the property tax rate um, of 41 cents, uh, I don't think anybody at this table uh, hopes that that ultimately will happen. That is uh, a requirement that we put in the paper and give public notice on. It can go down from there 
it can't go up from there. And, and I just wanted to put that on the record that it is, um, you know, not my intention or desire to vote for that. And it, that does not mean just because we're uh, making a published notice of that, that that's where it will be. There's been the much publicized uh, referendum discussion and uh, the referendum will determine whether or not um, that uh, increase uh, and the repayment of that um, uh, judgment is done through a property tax increase or the franchise fee. And uh, I just wanted to point that out for people that might read into it that it's our intention to raise taxes. I think all of us hope to avoid that. With that, I'll move it. And we'll have the hearing. All right. Frank. Mr. Coleman, yeah. I'd also like to uh, clarify that uh, it would be my full intention to uh, reduce that amount by the full 41 cents if the referendum passes. Right. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Aye. Seven yes. Okay. Well, next, uh, number 43. Mr. Coleman again. Yeah, thank you for the time. 43 is an item that I intend to approve, but I would just like uh, to make a reference to the, um, the city manager and others that will work on a contract. This is a, an extension of two years of an existing contract. Um, we've been fortunate to have this great public-private partnership in the maintenance of uh, many of our really highly regarded downtown facilities, uh, the, the Agenda List Gateway Park, Principal River Walk, ML King uh, Parkway, and the East Locust Streetscape as, as part of them. Um, and and my, my point in pulling this off is that I would like to see us get to a permanent contract and agreement as soon as possible. And for my perspective, that has to continue to include um, resources from uh, the downtown Schmid, and, uh, you know, which brings in private resources as well. That's how these were started, and I think the assumption was that that would continue uh, permanently, and I would just like to refer that to the manager's office. Uh, Rick, you may not be here when that contract is done, but I would sure appreciate you um, uh, making sure that it's embedded in our uh, discussions and plans that that uh, that's a uh, principle that we're going to enter that agreement and discussion with. Yeah. Does that make sense? It, it does, Mr. Coleman, council members. The, uh, th this agreement, as you mentioned, is, uh, is a continuance of an agreement that was approved some years ago. Uh, it's critical because it provides for the funding for the maintenance of the many wonderful downtown public open spaces that we have. Uh, it calls for uh, funding, the old agreement did, between the city and the RDA, which is principal, uh, and the downtown Schmid. Uh, that agreement expires, and what you're doing tonight is extending that agreement by another couple years, after which it needs to be uh, negotiated and put into a permanent form. Uh, in order for that to be successful on a long-term term basis, uh, the funding from all three of those, or I guess RDA is going to drop out, between the city and the operation downtown, really has to continue. Uh, and it's important that it does, and that's really the best way, and frankly, the only way to maintain those those wonderful public open spaces in an appropriate way. So I think your motion, uh, Mr. Coleman, is helpful and appropriate. It gives us some direction, the staff some direction, in terms of negotiating that agreement and making sure that it's funded properly uh, from uh, the Schmidt and from the city. Uh, so hopefully the staff can come back to you within that two-year time frame with the new agreement that accommodates those principles. Well, I would uh, move 43 and, um, and, and refer this principle to the manager's office uh, as, some, as a component for the negotiations on a future agreement. Okay. They do a great job keeping the downtown area clean, I know, and it's very much uh, appreciated by people who visit here. So any further comment? Seeing none, we'll vote on that. Mayor? Aye. Seven yes. Okay. Well, we have uh, finished our uh, items, and it's not uh, 5 o'clock yet, so we'll jump over the... We have another one. Oh, there's a 44. Okay, sorry. A 44. 
Um, Bill? Yep. Uh, can we talk on it? You can, yeah. Uh, yeah, we have got an appointment coming up in April for um, Human Rights Commission, and uh, I have an excellent candidate, Francis Bogus. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gray, we're oh, yeah, you're, sorry. I sorry. think the motion from the mayor was to take up 44I. Oh. 44I? Okay. okay. Report and discussion regarding proposed legislation that would restrict the city's ability to regulate occupancy of residential rental properties based on familiar relationships between occupants. And I know that uh, Phil and then I think Jeff has some comments. Um, I I'll just go real, really quickly uh, with my comments. Um, these, these two bills, uh, Senate Study Bill 3068 and its companion in the House, House File 184, are really the same old bills that have been introduced uh, for the last several years now that would restrict a city's ability to uh, regulate um, property uses and density based on uh, occupancy and the familial relationships or non-familial relationships of those occupants that Phil's going to explain uh, in a minute. I just want to make a couple of key points, one being that um, these regulations are nothing new. This is something that has been in existence for uh, decades that cities use all across the state and frankly all across the country to regulate uh, these types of occupancies, densities and uses. It's been upheld by the Iowa Supreme Court as reasonable municipal restrictions. Uh, unfortunately, the House bill has already uh, made it through the funnel and the Senate bill did as well last week on a surprising 16 to 2 vote. The Senate bill proffered an amendment that makes it slightly less devastating for our neighborhoods, but in our estimation it would still um, not be good for our neighborhoods. And frankly, we think it's rather than creating a process to administer or, or create the, uh, the vacancies through the Board of Adjustment by allowing them to grant a special uh, exception or grant a variance upon request. Um, in, in fact, we think it's really an opportunity just to, for the uh, landlords to build a, a, a better record for when they sue cities. We think that's what is really designed here. And so um, because of that, we thought it was important that council be uh, made aware of that. And I think Phil is going to explain some of the detrimental impacts that you could see and why uh, the city uh, and city staff are so strongly opposed to this legislation. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem and Council Phil Delafield, Community Development. Thank you, Mr. Lester, for that uh, introduction. Uh, I believe this is uh, most severely a, a neighborhood issue. Uh, it is a, uh, uh, quite frankly, devastating to the neighborhoods and how the neighborhoods will be impacted by this change. Uh, where once you had single-family neighbors, uh, where you invest in a neighborhood, where you believe that the status will stay the same for the period of time you own your home, now could open it up to rental and uh, all the attendant pr uh, problems that come with that. Uh, an unlimited number of unrelated people, uh, at least as far as we're seeing in the proposal at this point. Uh, it would increase the density of the neighborhoods. It would uh, have the attendant increases in traffic, noise, parking, and those activities that can be detrimental when you have that increase in density. This goes contrary to many of the activities, many of the efforts that the neighborhoods have taken to reduce the density in some of their neighborhoods. And this is particularly important in areas like Drake and perhaps Riverbend and Sherman Hill and those areas where you have uh, an investment made uh, with the anticipation that it would be single family um, uh, occupancy. So this decreases the ability of the city control to control those uh, multi-occupant residential uses, other things, uh, unanticipated perhaps, but other things could happen as well. Fraternal organizations, shelters, halfway houses, and similar facilities. So we are concerned. We believe the neighborhoods are concerned with this, and we wanted to bring it to your attention. Christine? I would just add that this w item was discussed last week at the... Um, Metro Advisory Council meeting up at the Capitol. There was good discussion by leadership, um, and their comment to us was they were uh, watching this very carefully on the House side because they were um, concerned about unintended consequences. And um, we had local uh, Polk County delegation. They were the ones that voted against it um, coming out of committee. So um, the, the discussion is good, and there any additional information that we could provide to them I think would be very timely and very helpful as they're looking at this. 
I was just going to add to uh, what's been said. Uh, th this is uh, this is an important issue. It is going through the legislature at, at this point in the process, and uh, w we would appreciate any uh, support from our residents or citizens who have an interest in this in contacting their their legislators here in Des Moines to express their concerns or their feelings about this. Uh, we will continue to do that as well. But I do know that it's very impactful if our, if our citizens, our residents, step up and talk about these issues directly with their legislators. And we, for those of you who are watching at home or are in the audience this evening, we would be happy to provide uh, uh, background information such as we've had this evening uh, to anybody who would like to do that. So let us know. And if you want a name, Candy Ryan Dell in my office, she's in the back. Uh, Candy's available uh, either this evening or tomorrow if you'd like to get in touch with her. She can get the information for you if you'd like to carry a message forward. Excuse me. Mayor Pro Tem, I believe there may be some uh, neighborhood members that would like to say a word. I would hope so because it is going to impact the neighborhood. So if we have people who would like to speak on this, please come forward. My name is Christine Pardee. I live at 641 19th Street in the historic Sherman Hill neighborhood. Honorable members of City Council, Mayor, um, I'm frankly surprised that this matter hasn't gotten more press. I actually found out about this just from paying attention to City Council agendas, and I've reviewed the proposed legislation. I, I think that there will be um, a number of unintended consequences for cities, not only Des Moines, but all across the state. Um, for this particular matter, um, for neighborhoods, again, that mentioned Drake neighborhood, uh, Sherman Hill neighborhood, uh, historic River Bend. I think those consequences will be felt much more strongly. And I, and I have to reflect upon the many, many years of planning that this city has done so well, and the many years of the neighborhood plans and the neighborhood investment from, from citizens who've, who've taken an active invested interest in the quality of life in their neighborhoods. I think this is just going to be disastrous. I can appreciate and I understand the premise for which this legislation was brought forth by the sponsors of this legislation. Um, however, I don't believe it's in the best interest of the greatest good through citizens throughout this, the state. And I think home rule should rule in this matter. Thank you. Christine? If I would just add, um, a couple of the other groups that we're working with us up at the Capitol, Iowa League of Cities, they're very opposed to this. Um, as well as the Metro Coalition. So there's a, a lot of opposition out there, but to be perfectly honest, the Landlord Tenant Association has been very active and very aggressive in pushing this up at the Capitol. So um, it's just important that we bring all of our resources together as well. Yeah. Thank you. Christine uh, Coleman? Um, I, I, we have the wherewithal to send a note out to the neighborhood associations and I would recommend uh, that the council authorize um, the manager or somebody to do that um, so that each of the neighborhood associations have a specific communication from us kind of describing the impact and the testimony that we heard here today. Um, I, I think that that's really important that we communicate directly with them. I'd also make just one quick suggestion. While people were talking, I know that we have a... Uh, um, a spot on our website where you can sign up for email alerts or text alerts, get the snow zoning issues in your area. Um, it, it would probably be wise and beneficial to the city to ask people if they would like to get uh, legislative updates from the city as well, so that when we have a call for action, uh, people that are interested and follow the uh, work of the state capitol, they might be able to engage and uh, send a note to their own representative. Good suggestions, yeah. So, uh, uh, could I make a, a, a addendum to uh, Mr. Coleman's suggestion? I think it should come from the council as well as the staff. So I think that we ought to pull a, a letter together that uh, uh, lets everybody know that the electeds in our city um, uh, strongly oppose this. I've heard not only from the neighborhoods that are mentioned, but neighborhoods all over town, including uh, uh, South Side uh, and the West Side, because that, that law, um, even, even the way it's written today, allows uh, all kinds of, of group housing, kinds of situations that happen in any neighborhood across the city. Uh, obviously, it works much better in places that have 
nice old Victorians or very large homes where they can uh, put in a whole lot of folks. But uh, we we have to be very diligent in, in letting everybody know what, what this can happen because it could have a severe impact on property values. You're right, yeah. So we have a motion. To... I'll, I'll move to receive and file the, the comments and uh, direct uh, the, the city manager's office to draft a letter that, that uh, the mayor signs on behalf of the council. And if it's wise that the manager signed it as well, that, that would be great. But um, I'd, I'd hope that we could authorize the mayor to say on behalf of the council and uh, continue the letter to our neighborhood associations. Yep. Good, motion. Okay, let's vote on that. Mayor? Aye. Seven, yes. <clears throat> okay, um, moving on to uh, uh, item 45, amending chapter 114 of the Municipal Code for removal of PM peak hour restrictions east side of 9th Street from Crocker to Indiana. Any speakers on that? I'll move 45. Seeing none, we have a motion. Move. Seven yes. <clears throat> okay, item 46 from Martin Wiesenberg, 222 3rd Avenue, Southeast Sea Rapids, to speak regarding amendment to section 126-62 to allow Riders Club of America to provide senior transportation in Des Moines. Is Mr. Wiesenberg here? I am. Yeah, please come up to the podium. Council members, Mayor Pro Tem, members of the City of Cedar Rapids, I apologize, I have How about a lot of You're in Des Moines. You're in Des Moines. How about the City of Des Moines? That there would be better. All right. Hi, residents. <laughs> I apologize, I have a, a cough drop in, so I'll, I'll try to talk around that. Uh, welcome to, to Riders Club. Diane, can we move back? I'm, I'm here from Cedar Rapids. I have with me Shawnee Bird, one of my riders uh, with us at Riders Club of America. Uh, thank you for sharing your time with us and welcome to Riders Club of America. I'd like to play the audience participation game with you tonight. That should be a fun game. Please, uh, I need someone to choose a number between one and three, nothing bigger, nothing smaller. Uh, can someone, can you give me a number between one and three? One, my favorite number. Could everyone please say, I love number three? I love number three. Let's try that again. You missed your cue. I love number three. Ready? I love number three. Yeah. You wanted number could, one. There's only, there's only one Mr. number. Mr. Weisenberg, could you address a council more than the, the audience, please? Then could you say, I love Thank number you. one? I love number I love one. number one. Thank you. Let's talk about Arlene. Arlene was the uh, postmaster in the city of Toddville for 40 years. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Arlene goes for a trip in our, uh, in our community. Uh, she starts out by going to the chiropractor. She then goes to uh, get uh, her allergy shots. She then goes to one of the uh, Salvation Armies in town. She then goes and picks up her boyfriend to go out to dinner. They then take him home and she goes home. What does Arlene have? Uh, she also does this on Friday. What does Arlene have in common with the other two people? Uh, that I wanted to talk about, both Pete and Carolyn. None of these people drive a car. In a recent senior survey, uh, it turns out that the number one concern among seniors is health. Number two is transportation. Now, I can't help people with their health concerns, but I can offer to drive a car for them. In a nation dependent on automobiles, to not be able to drive is to lose your freedom and your independence. Now, the task may sound simple, but when many people need rides, it really is overwhelming. I talked with three communities uh, about ride services they had provided, and all three of them collapsed. And I found a common thread that ran through them. Uh, after 12 to 18 months, the task became overwhelming. Keeping track of riders on three by five cards, spreadsheets, and databases was too much. They felt that they were, if they weren't there, that they couldn't manage it, and the systems collapsed. Now, there are transportation systems that cost about $150,000 that can organize rides. Uh, there's a nonprofit group that for $50,000 a year will sell a transportation option uh, for uh, nonprofits, 
but that becomes an overwhelming price tag for communities. What does Riders Club do? We provide a ride management system for a low cost option for senior transportation. By giving people with a passion for seniors the tools to manage those people, they can provide a ride service that augments the transportation options in any community that we serve. We spent uh, four years in Cedar Rapids proving that this would be a low cost option and that it could be self-sufficient. Uh, we have not required uh, grants from any municipality or the state or the federal level, uh, and yet we've been able to create a self-sustaining ride program with a low cost ride. Uh, if you look at the United States, it's big. I happen to put a red dot on Cedar Rapids. Our goal now that we've proven that it is a self-sustaining model is we want to reach 300 miles outside Cedar Rapids to implement a Riders Club program uh, in the communities that are around us. Most of those communities that we've spoken with so far have been interested in bringing in a senior transportation program, including Cedar Falls Waterloo, Iowa City, Davenport, uh, and as we talked with the city of Des Moines, there was a concern about having uh, a ride program with volunteer drivers in that because they're paying for dispatch service as, uh, as a uh, group of riders, was there a compensation issue that would require us to get a shield as a taxi cab? Uh, I talked with Mike, your traffic engineer, uh, wonderful insight, and I, I, I think it's wonderful to have that concern. My question to you, uh, well, in Cedar Rapids, we made it to self-sustaining. At a national level, if we can add four clubs every three months over the next two years, we can become self-sustaining there as well to meet this need across the, the country. In Des Moines, I'd ask for another exception to be added to your current code, uh, Chapter 12662. What that currently reads is it says, if you have working at a hotel and you're giving rides, or if you're driving an ambulance, or if you have a hearse, or if you're driving a bus, you don't need a chauffeur's uh, license, uh, a chauffeur's identification. What I'd ask is if there's any nonprofit such as us that's looking to offer rides uh, for no more than uh, four people in the car, uh, three passengers and one driver, that they also be allowed this exception. What that does is it allows us to keep our cost very low uh, for the riders so that as they've lost this ability to drive or as they reach that point when they should no longer drive, they have a low cost option that gets them where they need to go around the city. Why Riders Club of America? Because people want to help. People want to reach out in the community and they want to meet the needs of these others. What do we do? We provide a low cost option for those who no longer drive. We provide freedom and independence for those who no longer drive. Thank you. Are there any questions? Your timing is right. Uh, Minutes just ran out, so uh, we have any questions for Mr. Wiesenberg? Christine? I guess my question would be, I, I'm just trying to, so this would be done completely by volunteers. You're asking for an exception for this that would not require you to get the taxi cab badge. Correct. So the volunteers would use their own vehicles to transport? That is correct. We do reimburse them if they want that, uh, and there was some question if that reimbursement might be considered compensation. And we, we try to set up our system so we don't compete with the cabs. Uh, we need to know by noon the business day before. The cabs in this town provide a service that we cannot do. We, we can't do on demand with volunteers. If we can organize the day before, we can confirm that drivers are available and to make sure that rides occur. And so you've already had conversations with staff, and I'm guessing that staff indicated that... <coughs> they indicated that they wanted the council to consider this because they didn't want this to... Uh, they wanted to make sure that it should not be understood as a cab service or a limousine service. Well, I'll, I'll just make a motion to refer it back to city manager's office and all the appropriate related departments, legal and transportation, so that we can look at it and then um, they can get back to us with a formal uh, recommendation one way or the other. Thank you. So, motion to that was the motion. Refer. refer back to the city manager's I, office, I, legal I and transportation. They sure. said they had to pay for dispatch. Yes. Who owns the dispatch? Riders Club of America is the dispatch service. Okay. And so, you're the executive director. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we, would, we would hire someone locally. Who would, who would manage those volunteers and collect that base. And you'd work with a nonprofit? We are a nonprofit, yes. But you would work with a local nonprofit? They would establish as a nonprofit okay. to, to manage and maintain that. 
It allows us to meet as many people's needs at the lowest cost possible. Okay. okay. What, what's the appropriate timeline for us getting that information back then? Well, Mrs. Hensley, council members, I, I, excuse me, I would think it, it's going to take maybe 30 days to go through the legal review and meet with Mr. Weisenberg and talk it over with them and we can okay. get back to you in about that time frame. Okay. I'm speaking a little bit here for Jeff. I assume that schedule works for him as well. Some of the research here is actually <coughs> 30 days. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you. There, there is only one number between one and three. Well, that's true. <laughs> one, two, or three was my, my interest, and I couldn't even keep track of one. <laughs> okay. The vote on uh, receive, file, and refer. Aye. Seven yes. <clears throat> okay. Okay, we're moving on. Uh, to the hearings, item number 47, items regarding 2930, 2934, and 2936 Walker Street, tr uh, quick trip. A, amending Des Moines 2020 Community Character Plan, Land Use Plan to revise the existing future land use designation from low density residential to commercial auto oriented community commercial. B, hearing on rezoning of the property from R-161 family low density residential to limited uh, C-2 general retail and highway oriented uh, commercial. C, first consideration of ordinance above. D, final consideration of ordinance above. A waiver requested by the applicant requires six votes. And E, resolution scheduling a hearing on appeal by Quick Trick Corporation of a decision by the building official to deny reconstruction of a driveway approach in the vicinity of 2945 East University Avenue. <coughs> Do we have a speaker on this? Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, members of the council, Larry James, 801 Grand Avenue, Des Moines. Um, I'd be happy to answer questions. I know the council has a busy agenda tonight. I do have a PowerPoint that I'll, I'll, I'll spare you from uh, unless you'd like to see some plans. I think I've spoken to most of you already. Um, the, the project essentially is to build a new quick trip on the site at East 30th University. Uh, we've uh, had a number of discussions with uh, traffic and transportation regarding item E. Uh, I think before the next council meeting, we should reach an agreement. Uh, that's my hope at least. Uh, we're getting closer on that. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, we'd like to get the store open and ready uh, before the snow flies next year. So we're trying to get, get this done as quickly as possible. And we've had nothing but support from the neighbor associations in the area. So I'm open to any questions you have. Further questions? Well, so it would be uh, looking at our agenda for 310? Yes, that would be for E. Come back we, to us for we'd e. come back on the E on the... Uh, the reconstruction of the driveway approach. That's correct. But you're saying we may not even need that? No, we, we need to come back for E, because uh, we're setting that, that item, just the, just E for hearing. Um, we're trying to reach an agreement prior to that that'll still probably require council approval. Okay. I think if so, I understand the motion, you're, you're setting the date of hearing by item set E, the date. so yeah, you're, for, you would be coming back right. and yeah. you would have to conduct the hearing, but you may have a resolution by that time. Resolution that may or may not require council approval, correct? <clears throat> okay. I'd like to move 47 A, B, C, D, and E. Okay. Any further comments? Seeing none, uh, let's vote on that motion. Aye. Seven yes. <clears throat> Item 48, on waiver request to the Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, to incur program year 2014 pre-award costs for community development block grant funds, CDBG, and emergency solutions grant funds, ESG. Speakers on that? <clears throat> Any council comments? I'll go ahead and move item 48. I wasn't real sure what the actual um, 
deficiency we had. It wasn't in the attachment. Uh, Mrs. Hensley, we can have uh, Chris Johansson would be happy to give you some information about that. Mayor, members of City Council, Chris Johansson, Community Development. Uh, there wasn't a deficiency in the, for the request. The request is made um, nationwide due to the federal appropriations being delayed. Mm -hmm. um, all action plans from cities were delayed approval. And with that being said, with the beginning of the county year already starting, and some of our administrative costs being uh, currently already being expended, we have to go through this process to be able to draw those funds down. So we had an actually complete document yep. that was submitted? Okay. Yeah, due to federal appropriations, that's the reason for the delays. Okay. Any further questions? If not, let's vote. Aye. Seven yes. Well, <clears throat> item 49 on East 30th Street and Dean Avenue intersection improvements, resolution approving plans, spef specifications, form of contract documents, engineer's estimate, and designation of lowest possible bidder as Concrete Technologies, Inc. Brad Baumler, President. 783,830 and 70 cents. Uh, council communication number 14-071. A, approving contract and bond and permission to sublet. Any neighborhood people or anybody here to talk on that East 30th uh, Mayor Pro Tem, um I understand that the work will be staged, so it will have very little impact on um, the school and on the state fair um, okay. schedule. So that they'll start on the east side of the street, and uh, after Willard's school closes, they'll start working on the west side. So okay. that would be very important not to add more congestion during the state fair. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah. I'm going I'm to support this, but I've got some real concerns. We've discussed it before. The neighborhoods in this area have expressed the fact that during heavy downpours, there's anywhere from 12 to 24 inches of rain in and near this intersection, and this project doesn't seem to do anything to alleviate that. And I think staff needs to come forward with the project, whether it's a stormwater utility or sewers, in which we can start working on <coughs> alleviating that. Um, when we were discussing with uh, Laurel Hill, the fact that um, closing the railroad crossing on Southeast 34th makes it almost impossible for them to get out. They also address the fact that you can't go west on Dean during a heavy downpour. When you get to 30th, you're flooded out. And uh, I'm really concerned that that's not part of this project. And I have a sneaking hunch that at the end of the day, when we do fix the stormwater runoff issue there that we're going to end up tearing up some of the new construction. Uh, Skip, what, what, uh, how much rain are we talking about? 12 to 24 inches probably is not the number you were looking for. Does it happen at a two inch rain or no, what are we uh, talking about? Uh, Mayor, the number I'm talking about is the depth of the standing water there during a deluge. Well, I thought that's what you were talking about, but uh, we ought to find out how much rain has to come down uh, that we ought to be able to accommodate. I mean, if it's one-inch rain that's doing that, they need to get on it immediately. I agree. Uh, so Jeb, do you have any comments on that? Mayor Pro Tem, uh, members of Council, and Jeb Brewer, City Engineer. Uh, as Councilman Moore pointed out, this particular project in front of Council tonight is primarily a widening project. Uh, there's not very much storm sewer. The storm sewer that is in there uh, will be compatible with uh, future stormwater improvements. Uh, on March 10th, Council will have before them the uh, CIP for the next uh, year, the planning years, in that it does have a project for Deton Creek outlet, stormwater funded. The plan <coughs> is the improvements. This is really outlet controlled. Uh, you can't really make the improvements at the intersection because of, you have to get the water out to the of four mile. In order to do that, it's quite a bit of improvements. It's millions of dollars. 
the plan, if council approves the CIP, would be the first phase, uh, would be awarded later this fall, would be about a two and a half million dollar project. Uh, that would start the problem, then there's a second phase, which would happen after 2016, another couple million dollars uh, to get the improvements up to Dean. Then we can report to the neighborhoods there's at least a light at the end of the tunnel on the flooding there. If the CIP is approved on the 10th, then that's the start of the process to start the multi-phase project. Thank you. Yeah, it sounds good. Yeah, it's, uh, something's been meeting to be uh, addressed for a long time. So we uh, did you make a motion, Carl? Oh, did yes, you move I'll it? move. Yeah. Move it. That uh, 49 and 49A. Aye. Seven yes. Fifty on conveyance of a portion of the vacated East West Alley right of way adjoining 1701 Francis Avenue to Clint R and Rena H. Copy. Twenty five dollars. Any comments? Any speakers? Seeing none. Do we have a motion? <clears throat> okay. Moved by Bill. All those and. Take their voting time. Aye. Seven yes. Okay, item 51 on issuance of not to exceed $18 million sewer revenue capital loan notes. A. Institute proceedings to take additional action for the authorization of a loan agreement and issuance of notes. B, directing an advertisement, directing the advertisement for sale of not to exceed 18 million sewer revenue capital loan notes, series 2014B, and approving electronic bidding procedures and form of official statement. Bonds will be sold at 10 a.m. on March 12th, and a special council meeting will be held at 4.30 p.m. on March 12th. Do we have any comments? Uh, I'll move item 51A and B. Five. Seven yes. That uh, being reminded, that concludes the hearings, and we'll be moving on into the approving section of our agenda. Item 52, select a NAP property slash HAV as a preferred developer to purchase and redevelop 420 Ford Avenue. I'm sure we have some speakers. Mr. Anderson. Mayor Pro Tem, members of the City Council, Matt Anderson, Assistant City Manager. I gave a pretty uh, thorough uh, presentation this morning on this project and, and the next one on your agenda, so I, I don't want to rehash much of that, but I do want to respond to some of the questions and concerns that the council had uh, this morning. And then um, representatives from Nat Properties and hy V are here also, and I think they're going to say a few words to also respond to some of the, the questions that were raised this morning and answer any questions. So by, I, don't, I don't want to rehash a lot of it, but I do want to, um, <clears throat> I do want to address a couple of the concerns and uh, Councilman Coleman I think this is particularly your request of me this morning was to come back with some process <coughs> in exactly how we see this moving forward so um, we've put something together uh, that I think will will meet that so uh, assuming that the council does select the uh, staff recommendation on the on the high V uh, nap team um, what we would do is we've laid out kind of a, a two-tiered process one would be to come back to you uh, in 40, 45 to 60 days with an update. And what we would be updating you on is the, is the evolution of the project. So we're going to go out and with the developer and city staff and meet with various stakeholders. Those stakeholders would be the Downtown Neighborhood Association, the residents that, that are particularly the residents adjoining the property, um, the, uh, the adjoining business owners, uh, people like Connie Weimer at Business Publications um, who, have, uh, are, who are impacted. Um, the uh, downtown farmers market, the, D the DCA, um, the uh, uh, run it through, run the project through Urban Design Review Board and, and various staff processes um, to address some of those concerns. And those concerns would be things such as the density 
um, a revised site plan, placement and massing of the buildings, exterior materials, signage, site layout, circulation, um, particularly looking at things such as the, um, the uh, ingress and egress on 5th, how does the traffic circulate, um, how are deliveries done. We know that grocery stores have a, a, a lot of deliveries, so not, not just where the deliveries occur, but how they occur, what time of day they occur, how long are trucks parked there. Um, and we'll also look at uh, what is the appropriate size and uh, best ownership model for that parking ramp that we've uh, uh, designated on the site, and then a, uh, a detailed uh, fiscal impact of the of the project. So we'd estimate 45 to 60 days. Come back with really what we'd see as preliminary terms of agreement. We're at the, we're at conceptual right now. We often bring things to you, uh, projects to you on kind of a two-tiered process. One being preliminary terms of agreement, and another final agreement coming forward. So we're kind of doing a three-step and we can even, you know, we can go through whatever steps we need to, to to make you comfortable that we're going in the right direction. But really seeking that stakeholder input right now in this phase and then taking all that into account and, and watching the project evolve and then coming back to you. And then um, that next step would be to go through the formal uh, developer-initiated process. Legal will advise us on the exact steps that we need to, we need to take to, um, to uh, meet state or renewal law um, and then bring it back for the formal process. Any, any questions? Did I miss anything in, in your questions from this morning? And again, Knapp and Hy-Vee are here to, to kind of address their end of things. Any comments, Mr. Coleman? I think they have done a good job putting this together, I think. I, I have some comments. It's not a public hearing, but you're going to take yep. comment? Well, maybe we can take oh, that well, and then... Oh, wait a minute. Uh, and then it's not, it's it's not, not Yeah. Not yeah, yeah, let's have... We'll take comment. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I've been reminded then I, it's then I, not a public. Then I have yeah. some comments, but I'll let the okay. public and. We got other speakers, speakers in. Yeah, probably we ought to come forward. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, Mr. Mayor on the phone, members of the council. I'm Jerry Nugent with uh, Nap Properties, and with me is Peter Hosh, who is an uh, officer and representative of High V. And also present with us are Bill Knapp, too, from Knapp Properties, and Terry Geppert from OPN Architect, who is the architect for our project. And we wanted to just briefly go over two issues that we heard that uh, resounded with us to discuss, you know, the urban design process and the urban design features of this project and how w we will address them. And secondly, why this site for High V as opposed to other sites in and around downtown. Peter will address uh, the second. But with respect to the urban design features, we, we understand, and it was made clear by the original request issued by the city, that the, the major constituencies, the courthouse, the historic depot, Court Avenue, and the redevelopment that's going on across the street, as well as the residential uh, neighborhood to the east of this site, are very important, and that have to be respected and addressed by our development and at the same time have a site that functions both for our services but respects the farmer's market and the traffic in the residential area and the more commercial Fifth Street. We also understand that our design must, uh, must respect and meet the terms of the Court Avenue ordinances, all of which uh, we have reviewed and feel that we can meet those, th those uh, issues. Uh, the, in the manager's letter, there are six key negotiation points that specifically deal with all of these items, and uh, we've reviewed those and are certain that we can work together with the city and the neighbors to come to uh, a satisfaction in addressing each of these items, uh, both for the various constituents and to the urban design uh, elements of the city. Um, one of the issues that we like to point out on our team that how important this is, is that we engaged OPN. They have a long history in dealing with projects downtown, both renovation and new construction. In fact, they office on Court Avenue, and we think that with OPN on board, we can uh, satisfy these type of urban design uh, requirements as well or better than, than any other team. And we've already begun the process of dealing with constituencies. We've met with Connie Weimer, the owner of the depot. We've met with uh, 
the Condominium Owners Association uh, immediately to the east and uh, had very good dialogue with them and certainly think we can address the needs that they've expressed and still make a site that is viable and a commercial success. So again, I feel very strongly that we can satisfy the urban design requirements and the, and the urban design uh, features that this site demands and, and should have. So with that, I would, I, we're, any of the four of us are happy to answer any questions, but I'd have asked Peter to address the issue of why this site is the site that Hy-Vee has selected for its first urban location. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and members of the council. We appreciate you considering our agenda item this evening and our development project. Uh, we're really excited as Hy-Vee uh, to be able to bring this amenity to downtown if we're, we're selected. We feel that the time is right to bring a full service grocery store to downtown Des Moines. Uh, we have looked for several years with NAP properties and with members of city staff at the different redevelopment opportunities that are available downtown and really are quite confident that this is the right location. Uh, it was mentioned in, in uh, Mr. Anderson's presentation this morning about neighborhood. And we really feel that a connection with the residential development that, that has taken place downtown is what is needed in a downtown grocery store. Uh, you know, there's an opportunity, or it's been alluded to, <clears throat> the opportunities along MLK. Uh, that is really a, a, an environment and a location type that tries to connect with the commuter traffic. And we touch we touched those commuters in most of our locations in the suburbs. Uh, that's an opportunity that this location will provide. It can connect with the commuter traffic, both over the noon hour and in the evening. But our focus and really our goal long term is to connect with the residential development that's taken place downtown and hopefully we will bolster that residential development and can connect with that going forward. I think uh, when we look at locations, it's not today, it's not five years from now, it's looking out 10, 15, 20 years. And we know that the momentum that that, that downtown has and the proximity uh, to current and future residential development downtown that this Court Avenue location provides <coughs> is the right choice for a downtown urban environment. And we want to connect with and become a part of and help improve the amenity of the farmer's market and we feel that we can do that adequately at this location. So uh, hopefully that answers some of your questions relative to why we have chosen this location. I'd be happy to answer any additional questions you have on that issue or anything else, uh, as would uh, Jerry or any of the other members of our team. Mr. Gray? Yeah, <clears throat> I just have one question. Yeah. Um, in building this, is there going to cause any delays in any of your other properties, like one maybe <laughs> on Douglas <laughs> Avenue? <laughs> just curious. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, that's being held up for a, a reason uh, outside of, of our control. Uh, we continue to actively work on that. I was in a discussion uh, on, you know, an opportunity to move forward with that project with American Tower as early as a week and a half ago. Um, we're providing them some additional information. So no, these two projects are not intertwined in any way, and uh, our focus uh, is both downtown and developing the property that you have alluded to. Another question. Thank you. Um, another question along the lines. You've talked about the um, location at Fourth and Court. I've had several questions, Peter, um, regarding why wouldn't you locate across the street at Fifth and Walnut that has Skywalk access to it? Could you address that one? Yeah. You know, I think it's a. This is a project that's ready to go today. Uh, secondly, I think the the physical layout of the property in question that you're speaking of doesn't allow for. Uh, the format that we need. I, I think the connection with the residential development that we're pro proposing here, as well as some surface parking. Uh, you know, I alluded to not wanting to position a store just for the commuter traffic, but we do need to engage that customer on you know, over the noon hour and throughout the week. So surface parking allows us to do that. Um, so really, I, I would say the overall layout of the block uh, affords it the, the best opportunity for Hy-Vee moving forward. Thank you. Any other comments? Have any other speakers that uh, like to talk on this? Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, my name is Roger Ferris. I'm president of the uh, SoCo on 4th condominiums across the street from this proposed development. Uh, we have been working very closely with Connie Weimer, owner of the depot, who occupies the uh, southern edge of the development. Your staff has recommended to you that Knapp IV be chosen as the selected uh, preferred developer and has a second part to that recommendation, and that is the five negotiating points uh, to which Mr. Nugent just referred. 
uh, we are in support of both of those recommendations, the choice of, of uh, NAP, hy -V, and those five negotiating points as key elements of the proposal and of the recommendation. When I look out of my front window, I see across the street a 2.3 acre site that has been empty for 13 years. And it is a blight on downtown Des Moines. When I look out of my front window, I see drug deals going down. I see a site used as a latrine frequently. I have heard and seen gunshots across the street in that parking lot. It's the kind of blight that a vibrant city shouldn't have. And this is our opportunity to end it and to end it in a very, very good way. In no sense does anything I have to say indicate opposition to any of the other plans because we had five very good plans. But this is a plan, the grocery store plan, brings something that all the residents of downtown Des Moines have been crying for for years. And in fact, maybe even more important, it's something that all of the people of Des Moines who have been thinking about living downtown and don't yet have been crying for it for years. It's a balanced plan that brings diversity. Downtown we have a lot of bars and we have a lot of restaurants and we have good ones at all price levels. But what we don't have downtown is the things that people need to live their everyday lives. Not when they're wanting a drink or not when they're wanting a, something good to eat or even when they're wanting some other kind of entertainment. We have nothing for every day. We don't have a grocery store, which is the very beginning of being able to live your everyday life. Nor do we have any other retail. And my feeling is that once we start down this road with a grocery store, that other retail may now be more comfortable downtown as well. So this is a project that I certainly, certainly urge you to support and to send on to the next level tonight. What's the implication of sending it on to the next level today? It's this. You're saying to your staff, and you're saying to Hy-Vee now, spend some time, work on those five negotiating points, and when this is ready for final approval, or the preliminary final approval, as was talked about earlier, bring it back to us, and then we can consider it as a final project. But keep this project moving, make it happen uh, in, for downtown Des Moines, and make it happen for the city of Des Moines. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ferris. Thank you. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, my name is Mary Frances Evans. I'm the executive director of IRIS. We are the Iowa Radio Reading Information Service for the Blind and Print Handicapped, Inc. Um, sorry, really long name. When I heard about um, this news, I was excited for my listeners. We serve about 1,300 blind and print disabled listeners in central Iowa. We have ish about between 50 and 75 right downtown near where this proposed project will happen. Um, most of my folks were not blind from birth. 97% of my listeners um, had full lives, are still independent, and have lost some if not most vision, but their main desire is to remain independent and that's why I do my job every day reading the Des Moines Register and other print publications out loud for them so that they can make choices about their own lives. Um, all the things that we do in Des Moines have had unintended consequences for the good for my listeners and for all people with disabilities who live downtown. Um, this is an incredibly accessible city and with all the things we're working on, we're making it even better. Our skywalks, um, and all the other improvements, the Tomorrow Plan. And certainly this high V will help people who live downtown, and Frank will talk about that a little bit more, um, because it's easy for them living with a disability and living downtown. Uh, my friends at, uh, on the Des Moines City Council, my friends at High V, and in full disclosure, um, High V has been the sole sponsor of a goofy little show called Midweek Shopping Cart for many years. Um, we actually read the coupons <coughs> out loud so that our listeners can make a decision. We don't just read the hy -V coupons, just so you know that. We read Fairway, Dolls, everybody. <laughs> but you know, our listeners get the same choice that the rest of 
us have in knowing where they want to go buy their green beans or their chicken or when it's meat week or the goodwill sale at Yonkers. So this is something that we are in full support of. We're very excited about. And Frank has some more numbers um, about the folks who live with disabilities in our city. Thank you, Mary Francis. And thank you for the ride, by the way. You have to find your own way home. My name is Frank Strong. <laughs> My name is Frank Strong, and uh, I live at 1048 Southwest Davis Avenue in Des Moines. And I also work at the Central Iowa Center for Independent Living. Our center serves people with disabilities of all ages and all kinds of disabilities. One of the things we do is we advocate for the full inclusion of people with disabilities in all aspects of life, including buying groceries. But I do not rise today to speak in be on behalf of any business or any, <coughs> any entity, I am rising in support of uh, the concept of providing a more accessible environment for people with disabilities in the downtown area. By the way, people with disabilities comprise 20% of our population. So if we have 50,000 people working downtown, workers downtown, then uh, by my math, it's a pretty good number. <laughs> of people who are people with disabilities who are working downtown and those people w are likely to be those who, who would benefit directly from going to a grocery store that would be conveniently located so that they could hop on the bus and continue the ride home because transportation is if if there's a major issue for people with disabilities that is it transportation is critical because of the uh, the, the real life barriers faced by people with disabilities and, and also the cost of transportation is significant because a lot of people with disabilities are low income and therefore trying to maintain a vehicle is uh, oftentimes uh, very, very difficult if not impossible. So that's why I'm supporting the concept of a uh, grocery store kind of setup as has been described here. I don't know if there's other options other than the one that was presented a few minutes ago, but I do feel that this is a a uh, concept that would be very good for our city, very good for the folks that we work with. And, and by the way, anybody can become disabled at any time. It's, uh, nobody's guaranteed uh, a healthy, uh, uh, healthy life, a uh, healthy non-disabled life. In fact, if you, uh, we read the uh, Des Moines Register and we see where people are injured every day, they're uh, subject to uh, chemical explosions, all kinds of things happen to people, none of which anybody really wants, but it does happen. So those are the folks we work with. And, Therefore, we work with everybody, because everybody's a prospective person with a disability. So that's what I wanted to share with this group. And I want to make one other comment, and that is that uh, uh, earlier it was said by another presenter that uh, people with disabilities who, uh, or people that don't drive lose their independence. And I uh, disagree with that. I, I don't drive, but I have a, a lot of independence, and I'm rather proud of it. So uh, there may be a perception that some folks without, uh, who don't drive have lost their independence. But, I'm proud of mine, and I'm uh, working hard to keep it. So thank you for your time. Thank Frank, you. if you thank would, you. you gave me some numbers earlier on the way in. Um, I apologize. apologize. I'll get to the mic. We have folks in the, um, you know, uh, the, the numbers you were giving me earlier about the Elliott Apartments. Yeah, the, there's people who live in the uh, Royal View uh, Manor, which comprises over 200 apartments. There are folks that live at the Elliott Apartments. Those that, that, that There's around 80 apartments there. And over at the L.C. Mason Manor, there's 200 apartments, and Ligudi Tower uh, is comprised of uh, 90 apartments. Each of those apartments are apartments that are occupied with people, uh, by people with disabilities. So uh, those folks are folks that really need these kinds of supports, just like there was a, a good bit of discussion about the post office, which is out of the jurisdiction of this body. But nonetheless, the folks, there's, there's literally hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of people with disabilities who live downtown and need that, need that resource to remain living independently. <coughs> Do we have other speakers? Here we go again. <coughs> Good evening, Council, Mayor Pro Tem. Everybody knows me. I'm Bob Eichelberry, better known as Mongo. Let's get it right. Today, I hope not to be the grumpy old man from East Village. Number one, I want to thank Knapp Properties. 
They have done an outstanding job of building Des Moines to be a better place. hy V, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle, I'm there three to four times a week. Love, hy V. The only concerns I have, the location. Personally, I'm an east side hog. I'd like to see it moved east, but it's up to hy V and the money folks. I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with a parking ramp, although I would like one in East Village, hint. <clears throat> the only thing that really, really concerns me that kind of seems to have snuck in here, and it will agitate me, is trying to put the indoor farmer's market west of the river. I have gone to no less than six meetings held by Brian Meyer, everybody in the East Village that I've talked to, everybody in the Market District, which is our place, wants it over there. As soon as traffic and transportation will get out of that lot, clean it up, ideal location, great parking. Another hint. And I'll be a total advocate for the market over on our side and I wish I have all the success in the world. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> Mayor Pro Temp and uh, City Council, my name is Ryan Galloway. I'm with uh, I'm the CFO of Hatch Development Group. <clears throat> I'm not here to speak against any of the other projects. I think they're all excellent. Uh, I really commend the, the, the efforts that everyone uh, put forward. Hatch Development Group has developed about 200 units in the 50309 uh, zip code downtown. Many of them are uh, income restricted. Uh, we have a couple hundred more that are within walking or biking distance of downtown. And we can say that uh, um, of all, all the amenities that are missing downtown that our tenants uh, complain about the most to be the lack of a, a grocery store such as Hy-Vee. And so we're, I'm here to, to, to um, show Hatch Development Group support of the Hy-Vee concept. We think it'll be a great benefit for all downtown residents. Um, and then aside from that, I live in the, the downtown zip code myself, and I live and work and do almost everything downtown. Uh, the bulk of my trips are outside of downtown to go grocery shopping. And I think that, that there's quite a few people in Sherman Hill and, and the East Village who are the same way. So we're just here to support uh, the Hy-Vee concept, not necessarily the urban design of it or have anything against any, any of the other projects. We, we do, we, we definitely support that idea of the grocery store. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. <clears throat> How many more do we have here to speak on this issue? Yeah, I know, yeah. Okay, uh, one, two. Do you want to line up along the wall over here so we can get an idea of what uh, speakers that we're going to have? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, City Council, my name is David Uckel. Uh, I know Mr. Gray, went to school with his boy. Um, I had sent you each an email last night, 11th hour, and I don't expect that you read it, and I wouldn't have either. Uh, it was a little late at night. And I was going to read through the email. Um, I don't do a lot of public speaking. I thought it would help give me some stability, but we don't have a lot of time for that. Anyhow, i uh, got people that want to talk. My main concern... Um, uh, my wife and I have been having a civil war over this issue uh, since we saw this in the papers. Uh, she's from Minneapolis. Uh, I've been born and raised in Des Moines. Um, she's a city girl. Uh, I consider myself a city boy. You know, Des Moines a relatively vibrant city. But in her point of view, um, the big issue was that there is a lot of uh, grocery retail strategically placed throughout Minneapolis. So you can live and buy your groceries very very nearby. Um, and I have lived in downtown. I've lived in Sherman Hill. I currently live over the bridge on Southwest 9th, just right over the bridge. Um, so I do understand that a, a grocery store would be a, a boon to the city, downtown. It really would be. However, um, we're talking about the Court Avenue Entertainment District. And I think a lot of Really good people have got up here and, and provided some pretty good um, arguments. Um, and lots of these uh, arguments have been, you know, and I apologize, I don't mean to uh, step on anybody's feet, but a little illogical. Um, you know, yes, there's a parking lot there. 
uh, yes, it's a blight on the on the community. Um, you know, and certainly a, a, a grocery store downtown would be fantastic. Uh, but there's also a huge blight, a much larger blight, south of MLK. Right? There's open uh, fields, uh, drug deals, urinating. You know, these kinds of things happen in these open fields just south of MLK. It's a beautiful street. It's a beautiful expressway. Um, and it has ample room uh, for a high V. In fact, you could drive semi-trucks uh, over Fleur, uh, to and from, uh, when the expressway connects to Northeast 14th, if it does, I don't know. But if it were to, uh, trucks could come in through there, they can come off the interstate, they can hit that MLK, just simple. Uh, I'd love to see a semi-truck getting onto court with pedestrians and cars and the entertainment folks who want to visit downtown, um, I, I, you know, I don't know. It doesn't seem reasonable. But everyone seems to have their minds made up. So um, I wanted to be at least one person in the room uh, that opposes this as far as the hy V project. I think it's a great idea to have a, a grocery store downtown. We've got the Gateway Market three minutes away uh, if you're driving. Um, you could walk there, could ride a bike, could take a bus. Gateway Market's a great place. We've got the farmer's market during the seasons. Um, it's not that we don't have food options. Uh, additional food options would be great, but south of MLK. You know, let's leave uh, the, the corner of uh, 4th and 5th and Court Avenue. Let's, let's have people going to theaters. Let's, let's have something to do downtown that isn't drinking. You know, and I've, Christine, uh, I saw you on Channel 8 mentioning that... Um, there needs to be diversification, and I, I completely agree. I don't go downtown a whole lot because I don't drink a whole lot. So to me, going downtown is, you know, kind of silly. But I'll tell you, I do have to go to the suburbs to watch a movie. Why do I have to go to the suburbs? Fleur has the Fleur Cinema. That's great. But when, I live right downtown. I could just hop over that bridge, and I can't do that. A lot of times, if I want to see a major uh, release, i got to go to the suburbs. My money goes to the suburbs. I go out to eat after the movie in the suburbs. Um, I don't know. To me, it just seems like uh, we've got different potentials for that area. I'd really like to see something else there that's not a grocery store. Hey, guys, date night on Friday nights at, the, at, at Dolls is great with my wife. We love it. We pick all our groceries up. But that kind of excitement doesn't seem to be necessarily, it has to be on 6th or 5th and Court, you know. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Dave. Dave. <coughs> Next speaker. <coughs> Pat Miners, 4115 55th Des Moines, uh, Mayor, Mayor Pro Council members, thanks for listening. Uh, I think Des Moines needs to make a decision. Do we have an entertainment district? And if you vote for this grocery store on Court Avenue, you are saying no. Des Moines does not have an entertainment district. So the next time, the Convention and Visitors Bureau goes to the NCAA, hoping to get one of their athletic events here, or maybe an Olympic trial event, what are you going to tell them? No, we have no entertainment district, but you can go down on Court Avenue and buy a can of corn as a souvenir. I've never been to a convention where they didn't stress what you could do in the off hours. And basically in Des Moines, there is very little to do. I've read about what's going to, to go in the uh, Walnut Street area, and it mentioned in the Fleming building they were going to put a grocery store. That Fleming building is currently under construction, being renovated. So are they just being kicked to the back if they want to put a grocery store there? What happened to, um, you know, sticking to your word? If you tell the Walnut Street people they can have a grocery store and you accept that plan, and then you come back later and go, <laughs> somebody came along that we like better. I don't think there's any integrity in that for one thing. It's also easier to retrofit a current building. You've got the hub, you've got the Fleming building, you've got the Yonkers building, which they say they want to put retail in. Grocery store would mesh better there. It would mesh better being next to the, Wal the Walgreens. It would mesh better next to Burger King. If somebody can't get or goes to Walgreens for a prescription, they want to pick up some ground beef and lettuce on the way home, they can go to Hy-Vee right there. They don't have to walk four or four, five blocks. It's right there. It makes sense 
to have a shopping district and an entertainment district, not a mishmash of a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You need to make a decision. It also seems to me it'd be easier to put a grocery store in one of those buildings where you don't need high ceilings, but if you want to put in a theater, that is going to be a whole lot harder to retrofit, it would seem to me, because you have ceilings that are 20, 30 feet tall, you need large open spaces, you can't have columns in the way because you, you block the movie, <laughs> of course. Um, but you can't tell the people that come for an NCAA or anything else, or you want to bring uh, anything like that to town, you can't say, oh, in between your games, go take in a movie, have dinner in a movie. You can't do that. Des Moines needs to make a decision. And by the way, I am a stakeholder, despite what some people say, even though I live out near Merle Hay Mall. Downtown does not belong just to those people who live there. I believe it belongs to all the residents in Des Moines. Thank you. <clears throat> Mayor Pro Tem, Council. My name is John Thompson. Um, I'll give a disclaimer first. I am, I'm a board member for the Downtown Neighborhood Association, but I'm here speaking as an eight-year resident of downtown, uh, not speaking for the board. And your address is? My address is 1719 Locust, um, or excuse me, Grand. Uh, I've been there for a year, and then I was also in the Hallett for seven years prior to that. Um, I am entirely for a grocery store. I am not for a grocery store at that location. Uh, I don't believe that the grocery store, or I don't believe that, that serves an urban community in the way that a grocery store should be. Um, I have seen urban, urban grocery stores in Kansas City. I've seen urban grocery stores in Boston. And that does not look like an urban grocery store. That looks like a suburb grocery store in an urban setting. I don't believe that an urban grocery store needs a flat lot. I don't believe that an urban grocery store, I don't believe that the, the condominiums that are around the urban grocery store is going to have, um, is going to accept the, the <coughs> traffic of semis coming in at 6 a.m. like what I experienced at the Hallett um, with, with re the restaurant traffic coming in to deliver food to, 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 deliver food to the restaurants. Um, I don't believe that that a grocery store would, um, I, I, I believe that a grocery store should have, have skywalk, skywalk access. And I really think that the Yonkers building would be a much better location for, for an urban grocery store. And I would urge the, the council to come back to, to High V and ask them to explore that location. Mm -hmm. Um, especially with the seven stories of parking that's next door that was built for the, for the the purpose of servicing the Yonkers building. So thank you. Mayor Pro Tem and Council members, my name is Ian Miller. I uh, live in the Ward 3 at uh, 1821 Woodland Avenue, Unit 1. I believe that you all received an email from me yesterday. Um, I'm going to not talk to all the points. I'm going to try and address the things that, uh, that haven't been spoken about, primarily how much money I spend outside of Des Moines proper when I try to find some source of entertainment. Um, I've been speaking with uh, all of my uh, social network friends and whatnot uh, over the past few days uh, since the time that I realized that this was taking place. And the general consensus from us downtown dwellers, I've been in the downtown area for about 10 years now, uh, is that we don't have a problem finding groceries. There are groceries down Ingersoll at Dolls, that's five minutes away, uh, maybe 10 to 15, depending on how fast I pedal my bike. Um, and there, there's a Sea Fresh Market uh, just up uh, Second Avenue, or Sixth Avenue as well. Sorry, um, there's there's also a, a Dolls that's that's down Fleur, not too far as well. Um, there, there are several places that I can go and get my groceries, right? And if, if I am going to do grocery shopping uh, downtown, um, it's it's only going to be supplemental. I, I don't want to I don't want to drive into the city to do a, to to uh, to do that to have that experience. There's congestion, the traffic, whatnot, the parking, the time, and uh, you know we're always dragging the little one with us, and it's just not going to it's it's not a safe. It's it's just not a doesn't seem like a feasible option. Um, 
Now, once or twice a month, we, we try and find something to do rather than sit at home and watch Netflix. And being creatives in a creative-minded young family, uh, we, we need the inspiration. And so we, we have to go outside to find some source of entertainment, namely the theater. And I'm not talking Civic Center or the Wells Fargo Arena, which we love to attend when we have the money to do so. But I'm talking about basic entertainment needs. I'm talking about a theater. I'm talking about going to see a show. And if we're going to take the family to see a show, in most cases we can't, unfortunately, go to the Fleur because the Fleur offers independent films that are mostly of, of a, an adult nature. So we have to drive to Jordan Creek. Uh, if we're going to go see a movie, we also have to have dinner, right? So uh, we're most likely going to have dinner out there as well. So, you know, our tab at the end of the night, you know, we're looking at $100, $125 to eat and see a movie, plus the transportation expense to get to the Jordan Creek area. Uh, we're spending a lot of money outside of Des Moines uh, to go get our entertainment, which we have to have. We, we do once or twice a month. So a theater-type proposal makes a lot more sense in the downtown area to me personally. It's our family. And from the general consensus of my social networks, it seems to have uh, you know, some resounding support from the downtown dwellers that are connected mm -hmm. to me personally. Um, I, it, to, to, I guess, wrap it all up, I, I just I don't understand grocery shopping on Court Avenue. I know everybody's saying that, and I said I wouldn't talk to all the points, but I have to reiterate that it doesn't make sense to me to disrupt an entertainment community, an entertainment district, sorry, um, with a grocery shopping experience. Do we want drunks stumbling down the aisles every night? 24 hours is great, but that means 24 hours of potential lewdness and crudeness down the aisles, maybe taking away from the moniker and slogan of Hy-Vee, smiles in every aisles, maybe more like, you know, a vomit in every aisle. I don't know, but uh, it's a little bit crude, but uh, I, I don't understand, I don't understand how it works. It's just a very strange juxtaposition. Uh, I don't ever see myself buying groceries on Court Avenue. There's plenty of room south of them, okay. So, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Ian. Thank you. Next, please. Good evening, uh, uh, Mayor, Mayor Potam, and a member of the City Council. Uh, my name is Ted Tran, and I live on 119 4th Street, which is the condo right next to the future uh, development. Uh, I just want to tell you my story. I, my wife and I moved to Des Moines over 12 years ago, and the first time I went to Des Moines downtown, I didn't think, you know, we would be able to live in Des Moines after she's done with her schooling. But I want to commend you for renovating the whole city of Des Moines, you know, the Riverwalk, the bike trail, you know, all the amenities that we are currently have and, and what we have today. But, you know, when I heard that we're going to build a giant grocery store right in front of where I live now, it just, it's just, it's just almost like we're doing something that's not what we've been doing for the last 10 years to renovate a city. You know, I can see we can have like a little uh, farmer, no, no, indoor farmer market all year round. So it's like one of my friends who I, uh, just tell a quick story, I visit in Seattle, you know, I, the first thing I went to Seattle when I visit him is like, hey, take me to a paint market, you know, and I don't see him turning around, come back to Des Moines. Hey, hey, Ted, I want to go to Des Moines and I want to, you to show me your grocery store. It just doesn't make sense, you know. And, and, uh, and then for my wife and I, you know, there's not enough entertainment downtown at all, even those we live downtown. Uh, we spend a lot of time, you know, going to Kansas City, Chicago, or, or the bigger city because there's not enough entertainment or things that big cities, you know, like Des Moines should have. And I just, I just want to, the member of city council, mayor, and the mayor pro tem to consider, you know, an alternative to a giant grocery store. You know, we, 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 we live in a society where food is becoming so accessible. You know, in this country, we have a high, high amount of people with obesity. And, and why is that? Because food has just become, you know, we, we walk across the street, we walk down the hall, we pretty much, 
you can find food anywhere. And I lived in that condo for over five years, and I just never had any problem finding food. Food should make, we should make food more scarce rather than accessible to, to the people who live in the city, state, and even the nation. It's just, it's an epidemic. And whatever we can do to make, you know, food is not, should not be a priority, uh, you know, that we, uh, we should look at. You know, we should look, you know, with quality of life. There are other things to life than just beside eating, eating, eating. And that's all my, my, my two cents worth. Thank you. Thanks, Ted. <clears throat> Next, please. Good evening. Justin Mandelbaum, Mandelbaum Properties. We're the uh, developer of the proposed entertainment complex. I'd like to make a couple of points. Uh, I think it's noble that Hy-Vee uh, wants to do a grocery store downtown. Uh, and I think everyone agrees downtown needs a grocery store. Uh, the question is, where is the best location for that store? And it's been brought up uh, this morning. I believe again tonight uh, that uh, 1,500 residents uh, could walk to that grocery store. And I think that's terrific for those 1,500 residents who want the grocery store in their backyard. Uh, but what about the other 7,000 residents that live downtown? Uh, my friend Ryan Galloway spoke today. Uh, he lives in Sherman Hill. He has uh, plenty of apartments in Sherman Hill. And I ask, are those people going to walk uh, to 420 Court Avenue to carry their groceries all the way back? Uh, or are they going to drive? And I think when you look at the demand of the grocery store, and I think Javi could speak to this better than me, uh, most people are going to drive instead of walk, and that's why they have the big surface parking lot on a prime piece of real estate uh, 420 Court. Um, and, and when people drive, uh, you have the problems of traffic. You know, the, those lanes, as I mentioned, um, the, the streets are two lane, one lane in each direction. Fifth Street has bike paths on both sides. And that's where the loading docks are for the trucks. Uh, I'd be curious to see how many trucks uh, Hy-Vee expects for this store every week. Uh, my guess is it's plenty. And as I mentioned earlier today, I had my friend, uh, B.N. Lee, who worked at the World Food Prize building. Uh, she got hit by a truck downtown in 2012. And that still affects her today with all the shots uh, that she has to take. And that's why we uh, proposed, uh, if, if there is a grocery store, uh, Perhaps it could be located either on the Skywalk, if Skywalk uh, access was important, or on MOK, where it has infrastructure that's actually built uh, to service the grocery store, and more importantly, could be accessible by all the residents of downtown, and not just the 1,500 that live nearby. The second point I'd like to make is it has been mentioned to me uh, that um, the city would like to try to accommodate all the proposals. Uh, and in particular, a movie theater, and, and perhaps there could be other locations for a movie theater. And it's been thrown out that a movie theater could go up by Wells Fargo Arena, for example. And I think that's very difficult, because a movie theater depends on foot traffic in an urban environment, uh, close proximity to other uh, bars and restaurant establishment, has to be uh, high in presence of mind. And the folks who go to Wells Fargo are there for a specific event. So whether they're there for a concert or a sporting event, it's probably unlikely that they're also going to see a movie. Now, it's also been suggested that perhaps Fifth and Walnut could be used for a movie theater, uh, which is right across the street. Uh, while I agree the location is excellent, the layout makes it very difficult. Uh, you would have one long hallway with, with theaters coming off of it. You would have a second floor, maybe a third floor with theaters. Uh, and that's not attractive to movie operators. And while I would love to sit here and, and say, yes, I'd love to develop a movie theater uh, in any location. Unfortunately, it's, my, it's not my decision. It's the movie operator's decision. And you know, we have three operators who have expressed strong interest in the site. Uh, one is Movie Tavern, their division of Southern Theaters, the eighth largest uh, movie theater company in the States. The second is B&B &B, uh, Theaters out of Missouri. They're the 20th largest in the country. And the third is Main Street Theaters, which operates the uh, Xarban Theater in Omaha is voted best in Omaha two years straight. And those are the people who ultimately make the decision. And if they're not in Des Moines, they're not going to lose any sleep because they can go to the other 50 markets that demand an upscale movie theater. So in conclusion, I know uh, it takes courage to turn down a, a nap and high V team. Uh, I have the utmost uh, respect uh, for both of them. I agree their project should be here. I just don't agree on the location. And I'd like you to ask yourselves two questions. One, 
uh, will Hy-Vee Hy locate elsewhere if they're not awarded uh, the development at 420 Court? And if they won't locate elsewhere, will another uh, grocery store come in and locate elsewhere? And two, is it important to the city of Des Moines uh, to have a well-defined and well-developed entertainment district, which we envisioned over 15 years ago, that could serve uh, to attract uh, as an attraction to our current residents, attract prospective residents, and serve an attraction to our visitors who come here, especially once the new convention center hotel is built. And if that is important, is it better to have our entertainment district anchored by a grocery store or an entertainment complex? Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Justin. <coughs> yes. Mayor Pro Tem, Mayor County, Council members. My name is John Mandelbaum, Mandelbaum Properties. Uh, I'm friends with a number of the other proposers, and uh, uh, I admire what they've done for the city. I'm a big fan of theirs. I have to say I'm, I'm Justin's father. I was lucky to get him to come back to Des Moines five years ago. He came back because he wanted to make a difference for the city. Uh, I'm a developer in the city of Des Moines as well as West Des Moines. Uh, I, too, am a big believer of doing what's right for the city, and I think I have a reputation that way. I think this is, uh, I think it's a horrible mistake to have an entertainment district and abandon that concept. The theater group and concept that Justin has brought to this city is bold, it's innovative, he's worked very hard for it, he can pull it off. and. What we do, if we continue to select the same three or four developers time after time after time, even when there are creative, innovative, and bold alternatives to choose from, when you, if and when you continue to keep giving the old boys more deals, what you do is you stifle the enthusiasm, the creativity, the, the boldness that young people who are the life and blood of the next generation for Des Moines, you stifle their, their efforts to do anything for the city because you make it so darn hard. This is a great move for the city. The grocery store will find another location, and I agree with Justin, it may not be high V, although it should be. And we ought to fulfill the, the promise you've made to the city, to all of us who uh, work in this city, if not live in the city, keep the entertainment district an entertainment district, and give this young man a chance to do what's right for the city. Thank you. Thank you, John. <clears throat> okay, uh, I see no other speakers. Uh, how about comments from the council? Uh, <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I'll start. Um, I wrote down some uh, different notes, and I'd, I'd, I'd like to just go through a couple of points. First off, for those of you going to watch movies in the suburbs, you're only a year away from a nice movie theater at Merle Hay Mall. The council has approved that, and we're partnering with them. You can keep your money right here in the city, and we do have uh, the Varsity and Fleur. Um, they are great places to go. Um, it would be nice to have an entertainment per, place downtown. I'm not arguing against that, but I I, I am pleased that we've made some other, uh, some other developments happen. Um, I, I join with everybody else that said that we have five great proposals. There was a time when we looked at this uh, spot and other spots around downtown, and we prayed and begged that somebody might be interested um, to think that we've gotten to the point in time where we have really reputable, uh, long-time businesses in Des Moines, young, energetic developers in Des Moines that are competing to invest their money here is a great sign uh, for our city in the future. Um, quick uh, lesson that I learned, a civic lesson, that I didn't really get till I sat here at this table. The state has really good laws about transparency that govern the way we operate. Um, I tell you that because if this was any other private development, at this point, nobody in the city would know about it. You know, this is very early in the process. And as Matt Anderson and others have pointed out, we're really on the first lap here. You know, we're, we're just being asked if we want to dance. We're not, we're not, um, we're not anywhere close to the finish line on this. 
But because we operate in a transparent way, and because this is public property, we're really early in this process. And I think it's probably unfortunate that this has been cast as the city is, you know, soon to make the decision on what will happen and who the developer is. We will take baby steps here pretty quick um, tonight or sometime soon. Uh, but again, those are baby steps at the front end of this. If this was two private individuals trying to work this out, uh, this would all be happening behind the scenes and none of us would know. So on one hand, it's kind of hard to make a commitment uh, this early in the process, um, but it is good that the community knows what's going on. Um, I, I'm really pleased, as I said, that uh, uh, hy V is interested in, in investing in downtown as well as, as uh, uh, the NAP companies and all the other developers. Um, today, hy V announced that they're exporting uh, themselves to uh, the Minneapolis area, and I congratulate them. I take a lot of pride in the companies that are Iowa-grown that are, that are expanding, and I know that's a, um, a headline uh, in the register today, and uh, online at least, and I congratulate you on that. As I've looked at these, um, I'm going to talk more about why I think the grocery store is a, a wise idea, um, that proposal, and I'll save my discussion about timeline uh, for, for, for just a minute. Um, I've told people that when the city looks at these things, we look at, you know, uh, do we have a great idea? Do we have a developer that can really do this in a high quality way? And do they have financing? And very few times in the history of economic development projects has a project come before us that starts with all three of them. And, and I, I keep saying that we kind of hit the trifecta on this. Um, some of the other proposals were very good as well, but this one certainly is uh, the trifecta. Um, we, um, so, so I feel really good that this project can happen. Most of the discussion among us at the council, and I've traded some messages uh, with the mayor today, have been about the pace and how quickly uh, we make the next decision. I, I'm willing to move forward today um, so long as we have some agreement uh, on some important things to me. Um, number one, that uh, we acknowledge, and I've said it here and I hope other people do, that this is the very first step of many steps and what we're really doing is putting the other four proposals on the back burner and saying that for 45 days or so we're going to negotiate this. I think it's in the interest of the city to always have um, options so we don't seem desperate and we negotiate from a position of strength. Um, so while I think that we're saying, and the words that the economic development team have said are, is a preferred developer, I'm for that, but it acknowledges that if things don't work, we still have some other ideas. And so the pressure is on to, to make a deal that is good for the downtown neighborhood and all the citizens of Des Moines. Um, um, I also want to make sure that during this process, there is communication with the council and the mayor. Uh, Mr. Anderson talked about a report out in 45 days or so. Um, I don't think that's good enough for me. And when I've traded messages with the mayor, I, I know that he wants to be apprised of this and to be part of setting additional principles. The blue letter, our council communication, uh, sets out five areas of discussion. And I think council should have significant role in that. And maybe the manager and the mayor can work out how we um, arm the negotiating team with some principles on that. Uh, I, I would move forward, but only if we have a firm commitment and the motion says that um, the, the developer and our city staff uh, will work with the neighboring residences, businesses, and the Downtown Neighborhood Association, as well as I would like to engage the retail expert that the city has previously used on Walnut Street. Um, I think his name is Mr. Gibbs, is that right? Bob Gibbs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bob Gibbs, who's been really helpful for us, you know, looking for a path forward. Uh, uh, and I think that that's really important. Um, the developer will finalize building elevations and a site plan that places housing along 4th Street, that's in the blue letter, and achieves an overall urban design appropriate for the existing buildings down there. It's really important that we maintain that whatever happens, we're working together and it has full council approval of what this building looks like. Uh, the developer and staff will work to uh, accommodate the downtown farmer's mar market 
Skip uh, made that point this morning uh, that uh, development along 4th Street can't kill what is one of the best things that happens uh, in the metro area, the uh, weekly farmer's market. Um, along with that, uh, Mayor, uh, Councilman Moore pointed out the circulation and access from other points. I think he made a great point this morning, and we need to make sure that that uh, is part of it. Um, I, I mentioned the time frame. Uh, while I think the blue letter and other things call out a report to council, uh, I'd like that uh, you know the mayor and the city manager jointly work on kind of a communication plan to continually seek the input of the council uh, through this process. Uh, we have biweekly uh, workshops where we get an economic update, and I would assume that this would be on all of those agendas uh, to keep us up to date. Again, I, I kind of refer to this as um, uh, this process is going to require us to take a whole bunch of baby steps, and this is the, the first of a whole bunch of baby steps. Um, I'm okay so long as those points, and I hope I articulated them well enough to go into a motion, um, uh, are, are included in what's recommended by staff. So what staff recommended and what I recommended, uh, I would support. The one thing that concerns me probably more than anything is I hate it when people say to me, ah, uh, you know, a lot of people just don't look to Des Moines because there's too much red tape and everything else takes too long and, you know, time is money and you slow everything down. And we hear that all the time. And I really worry that if we have a great plan and we kind of have this trifecta of the things that we look for and we slow it down too slow, people are going to say, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That's the slowness and the indecisive that I'm talking about. So I want to take baby steps over the next couple of months. I think this is a good idea. Um, but, but again, I want to acknowledge that uh, we have a long ways to go before we hit the finish line on this. And I'd, so that's my comments. And, and uh, that's if, a motion. If, if, the, if the attorney is okay with that, those tenants okay. being kind of a motion, I would. I'm for it. I support it. But cautiously on the time frame. Christine? Um, that was a great summary. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. It was a good one. <clears throat> I'd like to just um, talk about some of the comments that have been made here in addition to what Council Member Coleman has um, indicated and, and go back and talk about there was discussion this morning about we're rushing the project and why are we pushing it forward so quickly. Um, I, I would just like to have a public discussion about that and go back to the Sunday, I think it was like um, the 20th of December, when I received a call from Hubble indicating, you know what, Chris, we understand you've got a developer initiated proposal with Opus Group to um, go forward on Monday. We are local. We would love to have the opportunity to bid on that. So the council actually took action that said, okay, you know what, we're not going to go forward with the developer initiated. We're going to open it up. Therefore, we as a council actually determined what the process was at that point. And um, I really didn't expect, to be perfectly honest, um, a huge amount of interest. As indicated earlier tonight, that property had been sitting there for 13 years. And we had gone through two earlier processes to try to um, interest developers to come there. So when we received the news from Matt Anderson at the deadline that, oh my gosh, we didn't just have the Opus project, we had four additional projects. I was ecstatic. And then when I heard about the diversity and what some of those projects were, I was even more excited. But to echo what council members said, I am very gun shy about moving forward with a project. I've been burned. We as a city have been burned. So financial capacity, good solid um, individuals that have a proven track record within the community. And at the top of the list, I cannot tell you how many times we get asked about a grocery store. I've got some great letters here from individuals that live downtown, senior citizens. There is a need for a grocery store. And I have to sit here and as we're looking at what makes sense and what doesn't make sense, I can't imagine that High V would make a decision to locate a grocery store someplace that's it's not going to be successful. They've got a great track record. So I'm not going to sit back here and second guess why High V chose that. They've been looking for several years in the downtown market. And I'm assuming, I'm, 
will we'll have all of the details that they have thoroughly researched this. They understand exactly what they're doing, and they want to make sure that they put their stake in the ground and that they probably control the downtown market would be my guess. Um, and that's great. They've been great corporate citizens. So I, from that aspect, I think it's really important. I also want to address the entertainment discussion that's gone on. And after the meeting this morning, I had a, a lot of conversations with different people. And it was really very interesting. The, the one phrase that came up over and over again was, Chris, this is not an entertainment district. This is a bar and restaurant district. And I have to agree with that. If you look at the Court Avenue area, it's supposed to be an entertainment district. We're going to get it to an entertainment district, but we're out of balance right now. We've got 22 bars in a four block area. That is not an entertainment district. I feel we need to have some balance. We need to have some mixed use capacity down there and it will go back and it will become an entertainment district. But I don't see the huge percentage of bars and that type of activity. When by the way, our success from the city's perspective, we have gone from having to provide a few off duty police officers you talk to the police department, we're now providing over 10 officers on a regular basis because we have to deal with the issues as a result of having so many bars and being out of balance. A grocery store, hy V, I I have complete confidence in their ability to manage a store, to ensure that the operations are appropriate and we don't have issues with that operation because they're talking about it being a 24 seven store is my understanding. So um, we'll get there and their support to get us there, but I don't see the Court Avenue District being a true entertainment district at this point. Maybe it started out that way and that was our intent, but we have lost balance and we need to get more balance and I, I believe this project will do that. Um, the last comment, just to refer back, the Fifth and Walnut. With the level of um, interest that we have in the area and moving forward, knowing what we would have on fourth and court, I believe we as a city really need to move and keep that ball moving quickly on fifth and Walnut because we have lots of options. I believe there's a huge amount of interest in that site and um, we need to strike while it's hot. You have windows of opportunity. This is a tremendous window of opportunity for the city of Des Moines. I look out and I see, you know, Justin, I think that you've got great potential and I know that you're going to be a major player. But I, again, as I said, starting out, I'm really gun shy. I want to go with a project that I know has the financial wherewithal and that we're going to get across the finish line because we have stumbled in the past and we have not crossed the finish line. And I think it's really important now that we've got this window of opportunity for a great project. So I'm very supportive of the High V project. Um, I know that this is the first step in a long series of steps, and I'm confident that we'll get there. Thanks, Christine. <clears throat> I think we have some more comments. Skip, do you have? Thanks, Mayor Pro Tem. I'd like to thank Opus for starting this whole process mm -hmm. um, to take a look at a piece of property, a premier piece of property in downtown <clears throat> Des Moines, and say we'd like to develop that. Um, I'd like to thank the Hubbles saying maybe you should have more than one proposal on this. Uh, I'd like to thank the Mandelbaums. Uh, very open on this. Uh, enjoyed the meeting. I, I like your proposal. Um, I haven't been able to speak with Sherman yet. However, I agree with Mongo. An indoor market belong, belongs in the market district on the other side of the river. Um, just less than two years ago, we were touting the Sea Fresh Market at 7th and University and how this was going to give shopping to people downtown Des Moines. And I was kind of skeptical about that, but if I was Simon Cotran, I'd be in here having a cow that we're talking about putting a market downtown or a, a grocery store when we helped him open that at 7th and University, and this sure isn't going to help Sea Fresh by any means. We've been hearing for years about needing a uh, grocery store in downtown Des Moines. I think everybody's in agreement with that. Um, I want to thank uh, Ivy Knapp. Uh, 
IV is probably one of the top corporate citizens in the state of Iowa. They're definitely the largest employer in the state of Iowa. Run a first class operation. So does Dolls and <coughs> Fairway. But uh, my son worked for hy V until he joined the Marines. And I live a quarter mile from hy V, and I'm like Mongo. I'm in there three or four days a week. And we all know about NAP properties. They've done a great job. Keeping score with what was said up here at the podium tonight is exactly what I'm getting away from here. And it's about one third of the people are saying yes to a grocery store there and about two thirds saying no. Um, how do I answer to them that are saying no, the two thirds, that the Hy-Vee grocery store is the best project for this site? I can't at this time. I haven't met with Hubbles. Uh, barely got a meeting with Opus. I thank you for that. And uh, I'd like to talk to Sherman about their project. I made the statement this morning that this high V store, this project, I can punch a lot of holes in. I'd like the opportunity to punch the holes in the other projects. But I, it doesn't look like I'm going to have that opportunity. And by the way, uh, Councilman <coughs> Coleman, uh, don't forget Southridge and Merle Hay Theaters. We do have those to go to but, also. Yeah, very good. So uh, um, I really don't have any profound knowledge on this piece of site or any of the projects. Nobody's come forward with any profound knowledge on it. The one thing that seems to be reverberating me is that Court Avenue is either supposed to be or is an entertainment district. And do you think that a grocery store in the entertainment district is the best thing there? Um, I don't know, but I, I'm not going to be able to support the motion tonight. I agree with the mayor. This is moving ahead way too fast. It was, uh, I believe, December 23rd uh, when Opus came forward and we moved to open it up for other proposals. And here we are two months later wanting to land on one proposal. Um, I'm not going to be able to answer to those two-thirds of the citizens in Des Moines. Um, is this the best project? If it passes tonight, I will support it. I'll support the majority vote, but at this time, I cannot vote for it. Bill, comment? Sure. Um, I don't want to repeat everybody's uh, previous statements, so I'm just going to give you a little bit of my experience. Um, uh, before I got on the council, we had to go to quite a few forums, and just about every forum we went to, the question came up, what do you think downtown Des Moines needs? Obviously, it needs a grocery store. That, that was first and foremost, and just about every candidate would answer the same way. Um, then I took a look. Uh, my good friend uh, Randy Bradley's here today, and uh, we've done a long time trying to get him not to move to Florida, then we did another chance to try and make sure he didn't go down to uh, live in uh, condos in Jordan Creek. We got him down, down here on 4th Avenue, so uh, we're pretty proud. And so he's bringing his dollars down there, and I asked him, what, what do you think of, of this situation? He goes, it's great. It's, it's what he really wants. And uh, he says if he can work with NAP, he was, he's uh, going to be fully supporting of that. And that's a good thing to see. Um, so, you know, my, my issue then, and it came about this morning, was... Is this the right location? This is where the most frustration comes in. As you look around, uh, I've asked uh, the hy V folks. I've asked uh, uh, staff, and um, uh, we have had uh, staff answer the same question. Uh, where else could you put this? Could you go across the street to Fifth Avenue? Um, I was told, nope, it doesn't work good. That doesn't fit the plan that you want to do. I was hoping that, that we could find something in between so... We could have a win-win situation, have the theaters somewhere downtown along with the hy V. But uh, it appears that this is uh, the best spot for hy V. Uh, they're uh, a partner in this. Uh, they're putting their own money in it. I, uh, I think this is probably uh, the best that we can, but I uh, want to echo Councilman Coleman's uh, statements. It is baby steps. I want to make sure that we are on top of this the entire time. Um, and I feel if we can get this thing going, it will be a great addition downtown. Bob, I... Thank you, Bill. Uh, yeah, Carl. I guess if I don't speak, I'd be the only one that didn't. <laughs> um, <coughs> so this is my last council meeting in this interim role. I suspect that I've been asked more than anyone else in this room, where do you buy groceries? Uh, we've lived in the East Village since uh, 2000, 
2000 and been asked the question numerous times. Uh, well, we buy groceries at a grocery store. It's a deep secret, but um, I, I hope that when the council moves forward that they will also involve the East Village in the decisions. I understand you're gonna be talking to the Downtown Neighborhood Association. Uh, your ring of uh, eight minutes <clears throat> walk to the grocery store does um, cross over into the East Village. P please include the East Village, which is an entertainment district. So there is uh, more live entertainment going on in the East Village uh, than elsewhere. So um, I'm suspecting that this will pass uh, this evening, the first baby steps, and uh, just in case my wife, who's in the audience, doesn't know it, I'm ordering my bike trailer tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, thank you all. I thought you had, all had some good comments to be made. I think uh, our city manager might have some comments to uh, add to this. But. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Actually, just a couple, three comments I want to make. One is the person responsible for directing the staff activities on these things. The one thing about this particular proposal that I think uh, makes it different, unique from many others that we look at that has a retail component is that you have with this uh, the, the the major tenant, if you will. They're going to be a, an investor in the project. But here you have a leading business that came to us unsolicited, just so it's clear. Nobody from the city that I know of actually reached out to them and said, we want you to build a grocery store here. They knew about our interest in developing the site. They came to us and said, we think this is a great location for a grocery store. And I, and I do happen to know that hy V has been looking downtown for quite some time and that their desire is to create an, sort of an urban store that is different from their other product. Now, we're gonna go through a long process here, hopefully not too long, but a process that will identify what that urban plan, that urban store looks like. It has to fit into this rather unique district downtown. Uh, and I guess we'll just have to wait and see if it happens. But, but from my standpoint, uh, the, the recommendation, the analysis, the proposal from uh, certainly the, the, the leading grocery store chain in Iowa and the Midwest is quite compelling in so far as I'm concerned. That was point number one. Point number two, I wanted to acknowledge uh, Mr. Coleman's motion. Uh, I think the essence of it, uh, Mr. Coleman, was that you want us to uh, work with the mayor uh, and the council in terms of coming up with a communication strategy and a process going forward. What, what that says to me is that the council wants to be engaged in that appropriately. The community needs to be engaged in that appropriately, but we need to move it along in some sort of timely fashion. Uh, I, th that's, uh, that's something we can do, we will do that, and we're committed to making it work. The last thing I want to say is, is uh, to really all of the other proposers, it's been said many times, but this is, this is just a remarkable point in the city's history. I know some people in the room may not think of it that way. From my perspective, uh, from somebody who's been here a long time, this is just remarkable. We had five really strong proposals for a great site in downtown Des Moines. That's something to, to, to rejoice about. I mean, think back to the times uh, in the past where we've struggled to get, to get people to build anything. Here he had, had five really strong proposals. Uh, I, I think that's just great news, and it's a reflection, I think, of the growing strength and market uh, viability of our downtown. And to, and to Justin and John Mandelbaum, who've taken a lot of courage. It's not hard to come down here and plead your case the way you have uh, w with all of the issues that are going on here. Here's for, from, from my perspective, I want you to know this. If, if you come into our office tomorrow, we're gonna to sit down and work with you uh, and, and see if we can find a place downtown that works for you, that accommodates your project, that has theaters. Theater projects in downtown Des Moines would be great. And I think the sense of this council, unless I'm mistaken, is that if, if there's a way to get it in there that works for you and works for your investors, uh, we, we'd love to be able to accommodate that. And, the, and I, I used to live in the Court Avenue District. I know it pretty well. I think there are other sites down there that can be assembled for this purpose. And we'd love to sit down and work with you uh, on your particular project. And frankly, I'd say that to all the other developers that submitted projects. This is great news for the city. We had to be smart enough to take advantage of the level of interest that's been shown here in this particular site and see if we can capture all of them. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. <clears throat> Thank you for your comments. I, I had some concerns this morning. And uh, as Mr. Coleman has expressed, uh, we've taken baby steps. And, including the council and the mayor I, uh, 
has eliminated those concerns. So I think, did you make a motion? Uh, he did. Mr. Coleman? I, I did. Any questions on his motion? Okay, uh, all those in, in favor of the, the motion, uh, please record your um, vote. Five yes, one no. And I think the mayor dropped off. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. I think that's uh, we had a, a good discussion on that, and I think it's uh, will may remain uh, paramount in our minds as we uh, go forward. So we'll give you an opportunity to leave, and then we'll move on to 53. <laughs> Mary. Mary. Thanks for Back to order.
Okay, we're on item 53, selection of the Opus Group as preferred developer of the 7th Street Grand Avenue parking garage. Council communication 14-076. Have any speakers? Mr. Matt. Mayor Pro Tem, members of the City Council, Matt Anderson, Assistant City Manager. Um, uh, I gave a presentation on this project also this right. morning. Um, I think the main concern that came out of that was expressed by Councilwoman Hensley, and that was um, ensuring staff working with the developer and ensuring that there isn't an, kind of an over-promise and an under-deliver, particularly on the financial gap. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, we've worked with Councilwoman Hensley, and I've outlined a few ideas that, that I have that kind of similar to those, Councilman Coleman, similar to those baby steps that um, you talked about on Court Avenue, a couple of these baby steps, the yeah. processes along the way, little checks and balances that we as staff and the developer will go through and then come back at, probably at a workshop and tell you how that's going and where the project's evolving. And so that's that's my recommendation. That's, um, you know, a delivering uh, evidence of financial support that's consistent with the developer's proposal and um, submitting a third, or working with the developer uh, to submit a third party market assessment, both for the housing and the hotel. Um, and, um, um, the developer commissioning an appraisal after that market assessment's done so that we can see if there is the borrowing capability capacity that is uh, predicted or pr projected in the um, in the RFP response and then coming back to you and, and letting you know the results of that so that we're sure that this project can move forward as it as it was presented so that's that's the, the, the bulk of my update for this and and uh, uh, Jason Conway and Jeff Smith from Opus and Jackie Nichols from Sherman Associates are in the audience and can answer any project specific questions you may have. Thank you for the presentation, Christine. You know, thank you, Matt. And um, you did just a great presentation on both of the projects this morning. And um, I know we were supposed to spend, a, I think, a half hour and we spent close to an hour. So there was actually great discussion. Um, so I'm very happy to move item 53. I don't think we need to have additional presentation tonight. I would like to um, go through, do I need to read those items that Jeff or Matt just gave us? Do you want me to read through those yeah. again? Okay, let me read through. I, I think for the, those who are on TV. Let me, let me read through what we're asking um, be part of the motion, that there be evidence of financial support consistent with the developer's proposal the developer will submit third-party market assessments demonstrating the viability of the extended stay hotel and the market rate housing. The developer will commission an appraisal for the housing component to determine if the proposed financing structure is achievable and staff will report the status of these items at a council workshop within 45 days. So again, it's along the same lines with the communication, communication, yes. communication. And that's my motion. And I would just like to um, acknowledge you know, this is a second council meeting in a row. You look back at the meeting, the last meeting, we had the Hanson Project, which is a $45 million extended stay hotel down in East Village. You've got Court Avenue Project tonight, now the 7th and Grand Project, Opus. Um, that is absolutely unbelievable. We used to go years without those types of projects, and we've got three within a two-year period. And, we, and we're just getting started. And we're just getting started. On, yes, on, on March 10th, we will be bringing forward the Iowa Reinvestment Act application, uh, creating the uh, district for the submission of the state benefits for the Event Center Hotel. So it keeps coming. It's great. It's awesome. Yeah. So my motion is to move with those five uh, bullet points, four bullet points. Okay. Any further comments? Seeing none, uh, let's uh, vote on item number 53. Six yes. Item 54, intergovernmental 20 AD agreement with Polk County Conservation Board for the construction and maintenance of Mark C. Ackleson and Easter Lake Spine multi-use recreational trails. Council communication number 14-077. Any speakers on uh, 54? That's going to be you. Yeah. yeah. Any speakers? No. None. I don't see any. Our bicycle like enthusiasts here might want to comment. Thank you. I'd, Mr. Voss. Mayor Pro Tem. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I'd just like to say thank you, Carl. You know, this will probably be your last motion that you make with the city council, but <laughs> for your short time, it has been very enjoyable. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'd like to move um, item 54. 54. 54. Yeah. Yes. 54 has been moved. Uh, let's vote. Six yes. Item 55, items regarding the temporary four-way stop at the intersection of 50th Street and Meredith Drive. Uh, Council Communication 14072, uh, A, approving the Traffic Safety Committee recommendation to remove the temporary four-way stop and return it to a two-way stop or with an alternate, alternate resolution denying the Traffic Safety Commission's recommendation approving the temporary four-way stop to be made permanent. That's what I mean. And one under B is first consideration the ordinance changing the intersection of 50th and Meredith Drive to a four-way stop and Mr. City Manager. Thank, thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tim Mahaffey. Bill Gray and I have had a chance to talk about this a little bit. And Mr. Gray, I'd like to make a couple comments and then perhaps you'd like to take it from there. Thank you. Uh, the staff recommend, there are two options here. The staff recommendation uh, based on uh, the need to keep traffic moving and for traffic safety is uh, to have two stop signs, not four. The alternative resolution, if I understand, provides for the four-way stop. Uh, but I thought about this quite a little bit, and I've talked to our engineering staff, and I want to read from you a memo that I got from our city engineer, uh, Jeb Brewer, uh, that's relevant to this decision. And essentially what this says is that even though a four-way stop uh, may impede traffic and slow it up, a bit in terms of the safety uh, characteristics of that of a four-way stop, uh, it is it is not a uh, it is not a negative uh, factor in terms of the safety of that location. So, uh, if I may, I'd just like to read this so it's in the record. Please uh, do. This is this is from again from Jeb Brewer, our city engineer. Um, a four-way stop at 50th and Meredith does create does create more traffic delay for the intersection than a two-way stop. Uh, in my engineering judgment, that's Jeb Brewer's judgment, and based upon the limited accident data from the last two years at the subject intersection, there is no indication that a four-way stop would create an increased traffic hazard at this location over a two-way stop. If a four-way stop is approved by City Council, I would not oppose any on a strictly safety basis. So in summary, uh, the technical analysis from our engineering staff indicates that with respect to safety, uh, the, if the council decides to go with a four-way stop at the location, it wouldn't be, it would not be a negative factor based on the analysis of our engineering staff. I just wanted to make sure that was in the record so uh, that the council had, uh, the, frankly, the latitude to go over what do you think is most appropriate. Okay. So. okay, thank you. And then, Mr. Gray, this being in your ward, would you like to comment? I sure would. I think some people wanted to speak first. Okay. Does there anybody want to come up and speak? Here we go. We got one day. Come forward, yes. <laughs> Always takes one to get it started. Okay, well, I'll start then, because I think I've been the one since 2006 that's been bringing this to the council's atten um, attention. My name's Terry Golightly, and I reside at 4865 Meredith Drive. And I live on the north side of the road, so I'm actually a county resident. But from 2005 to 2007, I served as the vice president of the Meredith Neighborhood Association. We purchased that property in July of 2003. And within two to three years, I watched traffic increase, speeds increase, people passing in no passing zones, drag racing going on, large truck traffic, semis, et cetera, running down the road that both the city and county have clearly marked as an embargoed truck road for any trucks over 12,000 pounds. I went to the Neighborhood Association uh, before I was um, on the association and brought this to their attention. And basically, we started working at that point. I personally went through the neighborhood uh, in an area of about four blocks to the south, the residents to the north for about two blocks, and basically two blocks to two and a half blocks west and east of the stop sign. 
in 2007 and collected almost 500 signatures in favor of a four-way stop there. The problem for folks that have children in the Johnston School District is turning on to Meredith, whether it be left hand or right hand, became a dangerous situation because of speeds along there, a mild hill that blocks some visibility, et cetera. Um, there was traffic study done at that point, and I believe the county paid for the, the first one that was done there. And there's been two or three cents, and you folks did one most recently um, here this last year. I guess the points that I would like to make are that besides the intersection, this whole stretch from Merle Hay to Beaver, there are other accidents that go on, and that is not reported in the traffic studies uh, reports. And those tend to be rear end accidents for folks trying to turn into their drives or turn onto a street, et cetera. We have multiple unit housing out there. There's apartment complexes, there's townhomes. Uh, there's two sets of townhome units out there. We have three churches out through that stretch. And yes, we might be considered light residential, but it is filled up quite quickly. The problem that I see out there as a resident that lives on the road is there is no place for the city of Des Moines or the county to feasibly radar safely, uh, no place to pull off for the units, uh, no pla good place to put the traffic van or the traffic um, camera. So basically, the residents out there have been urging the council and the county since 2007 to do something about this because we're poorly lit, no shoulders, narrow two lane. And unfortunately, I happen to be one of those people that suffered a rear end accident three years ago in excess of 40 mile an hour. We were struck trying to turn into our drive. And if nothing else, my goal will continue to be, if this does not pass tonight, to ensure the safety of not only people driving in cars, but people traveling with bicycles and walking or running up and down this stretch. Because of the fact that Beaver was refurbished, we have a lot of folks now traveling this stretch to get to the Beaver corridor, to get down to the bike trails and the walking trails. So I'd urge the city council um, to take into account there was a large majority at both the traffic committee meeting and our most recent Meredith Neighborhood Association meeting in favor of these stop signs staying. And I would ask the council to take into the consideration for the folks that actually live in that area and what they would like to see out there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, pro tem members of the council, my name is Tom LaPointe. I live at 5597B, as in Bravo, on Meredith Drive. I'm on the north side of Meredith Drive in a townhome complex that is part of an annex property that's in the city of Des Moines. I actually am registered to vote in the city of Des Moines. I'm just going to ditto the comments that were made by the previous speaker, and I'm going to suggest, using a term from earlier discussion this evening, that we take some baby steps tonight. We embrace the alternative uh, resolution uh, from the ward councilor, Councilor Gray. And we also begin to take a look five years out how we can improve pedestrian safety on Meredith Drive between Beaver and uh, Merle Hay Road, how we can improve bicycle safety in the same area, uh, any number of different approaches can be used, but <clears throat> it is really an arterial at this point in time. And for anyone who is trying to get into our complex or get out on our complex in terms of going right or left, we have to deal with issues <clears throat> with oncoming traffic. If you're turning into the development that I live in uh, at uh, uh, Meredith Village, uh, if you're traveling east, on the Meredith Drive and you want to turn into the development, you have kind of a white knuckle turn uh, into the complex where you're hugging the yellow line. 
You're looking at the oncoming traffic through your windshield, and you're looking in your rear view mirror to see whether you need to be bracing for a rear end collision. Uh, very narrow uh, shoulders on this particular road. A number of people in our complex go for walks, ride bicycles, and we do so uh, at some risk until we get into a, a safe area. So with that, this resolution as an alt alternate tonight is a first step, a baby step. I would hope that over the course of the next uh, three or four or five years, we take a look at some of the hazards associated with that particular roadway. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. It's me again. Uh, Mary Frances Evans, 4495 Northwest Lovington Drive. I didn't realize this was on the agenda, but I'm pretty excited because um, we've, all, we've all had that one near-miss accident in our lives that we remember, and it makes your heart ooh, do that thing. Mine was April 17th of last year. Um, and the funny thing is the stop signs were there, and I was stopped. Um, I was trying to go home. I used that intersection at least twice a day um, to go to work and to take my children to school and then to come back. Um, I was stopped and I was trying to cross Meredith. I was on 50th and then I started up again and a person came out of nowhere and it was the closest I've ever come to being kilt um, along with my two small daughters. Um, just thinking about it makes my heart go weird but that's with the stop sign. I grew up in that area um, just a couple blocks north of Meredith there. And um, I know people, someone used the word arterial, I know people go down Meredith really, really fast. I know the stop signs have helped tremendously to slow that up. I know I can't take my girls on a bike ride unless we go all the way up to 50th and Meredith because of the safety of those stop signs. Um, I hope they stay. I'm all for the alternate resolution and I'm also supporting my neighbors you know, further action and looking at Meredith is uh, maybe slowing it down a little bit because it is getting much more busy. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members, I'm William Schornenberger, 5131 Merced Street. I'm president of the Meredith Neighborhood Association. Uh, in a previous life uh, in the public sector, one of the mantras that we lived in in decision making was process and procedure. And the purpose behind that was to take personality out of the decision-making process and make it based on data, make it based on standards or guides. And I, <clears throat> I do recognize uh, the traffic study, which was good, and the uh, guidelines that are used uh, at the federal level in the states and the city, which are also good. But one of the things we also learned in our process that every once in a while there was a factor that was introduced into the situation that our process and procedure didn't cover. And I think the one I want to point out is the number of times that the t uh, stop signs have been put in on a temporary basis and twice they've been removed. I think that factor, along with some of the other stuff you've heard, the emails I believe you have uh, from the, uh, that was in the traffic study or included with the traffic study, the overwhelming support in the neighborhood uh, I think those are part of the process and procedure at least to consider. And I think also that the uh, uh, indication that from a safety standpoint, having the four-way stops will not uh, increase any of the uh, accident rates. So again, we urge you, I urge you from the Meredith Neighborhood Association to adopt alternative B. Thank you. Thank you, William. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> Mr. Councilman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Yes, uh, I travel that road quite a bit myself. Uh, at least once a day I'm, I'm driving past there. And uh, what Tom has already described is, uh, is just that. You know, we've got a narrow two-lane road, and it just slopes into ditches. There's no sidewalk, there's no curb, no anything. So it is not probably one of the safer streets, and I, I would like to get something going with the county, because the county's got the other side of the street, mm -hmm. to do something. But... Uh, I also attended the uh, neighborhood meeting, and uh, I asked for a hand, show of hands, and it was uh, 17 to 1 to leave it in place. And I agree with that, because one of the things, I, in me traveling there as many times as I do, you, you see the signs go up and they come down, go up and come down. It creates confusion, and even traffic and transportation feels that we need a more permanent solution. And uh, with the Beaver Avenue Bridge going over the interstate coming out here in about a year, year and a half, it's only going to create more troubles. So uh, I'm, I'm uh, going to move that we take uh, 
number 55B and 1 uh, for my motion. I'd, I'd like to make a friendly amendment if you'll accept it. I can do that. Well, let's I, listen. I, I support this, and I'd like to waive the second and third readings and any requirement to bring this back. Um, I'm definitely in favor of that. Okay, I'd like to make one other comment. I'd like to thank uh, city staff and the Traffic Safety Committee for all the consideration they've given into this. However, in your blue letter, it does state that it was also noted that during the temporary installation, there was no significant increase in accidents at this intersection. Up above it, it does talk about how this can be annoyance to some drivers, but I think at the end of the day, we need to listen to what the people in the neighborhood say. However, I would encourage uh, staff, uh, Jennifer Bohack and Jeb Brewer, if you see a significant increase and you think it relates to this four way, that you definitely bring it back to us in the, uh, the appropriate neighborhood. Bob, uh, Rick, I, w I was struck by the comments you read of Jeb. Mm -hmm. Do you have those in front of you still? Mm -hmm. what, what's the first line? Uh, <clears throat> a four-way stop at 50th and Meredith does create more traffic delay for the intersection than a two-way stop in my engineering judgment and based upon the limited accident data from the last two years. I, that, that's probably good enough. I, I, I think that's exactly what the neighborhood is asking for. Yeah, you, Slow that traffic down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, if you've driven, and, and I, know that, I know that that's not always our goal around the city. You know, there's some places where we have to work more at getting people through there you know, um, in a more rapid area. But for anybody that's driven that, they know that this is probably the stretch in the whole city of Des Moines that is the funnest area to speed. There's big curves, there's a big dip. You know, it's everything that you'd want if you were 17 and, you know, wanting to go have fun. And we gotta have a stop sign there. It's more than a mile long without anything on what's essentially a, you know, a country road with the, with the ditches. And, and we have to have that stop there. And I know this has taken a long time, but I've told the neighborhood for a long time that I would support that stay in there. Angela Conley lives at, close there and represents it. <laughs> and I know she feels equally strong that that's the safest thing to do for that. That's why I think we'll get some uh, help from the county in getting some things done down there. So yeah. you're right. Good person to contact. For that. <laughs> Okay, so we had a motion on alternate. And I accepted uh, Skip's uh, friendly amendment Skip. to waive the second and third Perfect. reading. Okay, okay. All those in favor, please vote. Or opposed? Identify. Six yes. Okay. Thank you all. Uh, we do have an extra item here. This, this extra item. Uh, these item, extra items are filed after 5 p.m. on Wednesday preceding a council meeting and have been included upon the amended agenda by the city clerk. With sponsorship of the mayor or the city council member who shall deem the item of sufficient urgency to warrant immediate council action. Said statement of urgency from the city manager and or appropriate department director shall be placed on file with the city clerk. Extra item one, approving recommendation from council member Bill Gray to appoint Francis Bogus to the Human Rights Commission, seat four, for a three-year term commencing April 4th, 2014, to expire April 4th, 2017. Any, no, any speakers? I would uh, be surprised. Nope. Okay, uh, Mr. <laughs> yes, uh, and I want to point out, uh, Francis is here in the front row. Oh, um, okay. A Glad fine uh, Beaverdale yeah. resident and uh, he will be an excellent addition on the uh, Human Rights Commission. Uh, okay. Bill, whose place does he take? Who? Gabriel Karn. I'm sorry, who? Gabe Carnes. Okay. Okay. Then I assume that's your motion. Yes. I'm trying to make him sweat. <laughs> 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 That being the conclusion of our uh, agenda, I want to thank Carl Voss for his excellent uh, council membership. In a short period on the council, he's done a wonderful job. So thank you, Carl, and hope you'll come back and visit us. It's uh, been a pleasure some of the time. <laughs>
So with that, uh, the uh, council meeting is adjourned. Excellent. Hey.